I played 100 days of Stardew Valley. This game is every bit the farming simulator it appears to be, but it's so much more than just farming. Charming villagers with character depth and heart-wrenching backstories. Perilous mines with limitless plunder and treacherous foes, magic and nature intertwining in the cute sort of way. And fish. So many different types of fish. I took to this game blind. By blind, I mean I went in knowing nearly nothing, and consequently, I only had one goal. Do as much as I can, and one rule. Don't look anything up. Ever. And boy, was there a lot to discover. Oh, also, I made my fair share of mistakes, because sometimes I can be a bit of a goober, so expect a roller coaster of ups and downs. Without further ado, here is my 100 days of Stardew Valley. Our story begins, oddly enough, at our grandfather's bedside, and him bestowing us a letter, only to read when we'd had our fill of the burden of modern life. And a vague number of years later, we had had just that. Sitting in our cubicle farm at Joja Corp, we cracked open the letter, finding not only a letter, but also a deed to a farm in a far-off valley. Whisked away by bus to this far-off world, we meet Robin and Lewis, who introduce us to a very messy farm. Day one started as I presume they all do, in a small house, with a small box of parsnip seeds on the floor. I eagerly picked them up and checked out the TV with its conveniently relevant farm help show running. Then I headed outside to clear an area to plant the seeds. I poured a vague amount of water on those newly sown seeds and walked away a proud new farmer. The game gave us a quest to meet all 28 people, so I set out to do just that, including a spunky purple-haired girl named Abigail and a shy bookworm named Penny. Somewhere along the way, I decided to stop by the graveyard and discovered I couldn't read one of the tombstones. I accepted that as normal and moved on. I bought new seeds from this guy named Pierre, who conveniently sold mostly seeds. I did this because my small game knowledge told me there was an upcoming complete the monument type objective, and I knew it would need specific crops from each season, and I was pretty sure I remembered which ones it wanted for spring. Parsnips, which we'd already been given, as well as cauliflower, potatoes, and green beans. So I planted all those next to our lovely parsnips. The next day was simple. I watered the crops, cut down some trees, made some chests, put the tools in one of them because our inventory is tiny, and went to town. I went to the museum and met a fine gentleman by the name of Gunther. I also went to the big department store across the river, with the horrid name of Joja, and met an equally horrid man by the name of Morris, strongly suggesting I buy some sort of membership, which I didn't do. That night, in my dreams, I leveled up my foraging to level one, the pinnacle of achievement, and I learned how to make a field snack. I was clearly already making those god gamer moves. Real quick, I should mention I'm playing this game entirely vanilla, with no mods whatsoever. I should also mention I played these 100 days as a Let's Play first, and I will occasionally reference some hints I was given in the comments that affect my decisions. And finally, I should mention I had played once before, through about the 10th of summer, year one, so I knew a little bit going in, but not much. But, for these 100 days, all new information had to be discovered in-game, except for the occasional hint in the comments. Which, by the way, if you have any hints or suggestions, or even just want to point out some of those glorious mistakes I made, don't be afraid to give your thoughts down in the comments below. Now, where were we? The next day, I met a man by the name of Demetrius, who had an outright laboratory in his home, which tickled me as I glanced at the beakers and flasks on the shelf behind me. I also started looking through the game's menus and tabs, and found the collections, the recipes, and the achievements. And as an achievement hunter, this had an effect on me. Achievements, yes. Yes! Yeah! After that was over, I took a crack at fishing and caught a shad, which I was convinced held no value beyond selling, so I started away for later to sell. This was, as you'll eventually see, a terrible decision. With two questionable activities under my belt, I decided to make more farm space and plant some mixed seeds. The day ended with a third remarkably questionable activity, when a fairy came from the east and dusted my parsnips in... Whatever that is. So I started day four by harvesting our blessed parsnips and claimed the quest reward for growing a parsnip. Upon collecting, I received a new quest to build a coop, which I promptly ignored. I watered the crops, stored some forage. Did I mention that? There's just stuff on the ground you can forage. You don't have to grow everything you sell, apparently. So after storing those things that I found on the ground, I committed to deforesting my farm by eating these field snacks I'd made out of tree babies, which would provide me enough energy to be able to keep chopping them down. Makes sense, right? That night, I dreamed of more god gamer moves and reached the unbeaten rank of level 2 foraging. I was officially not bad at picking things up off the ground. On day 5, I found out about the atrocity that was, and still is, crows. Which, in the absence of a scarecrow, would eat crops. Joja also sent us mail about a landslide they cleaned, which I believed had something to do with the mines, the part of the game I knew the most about going in. Robin also sent us mail about upgrading our house. Like almost everything in this game, I knew nothing about. So I harvested our remaining parsnips and headed towards the mines. Access had been granted, but I walked right by because I was curious what was further east, and I found a troubling broken bridge. 
So of course I walked on it. Thankfully it didn't collapse. Leaving the dysfunctional bridge behind, I wandered into the mines and met a rugged looking lad by the name of Marlin, who gave us a rusty sword and a plucky, you might need this kind of dialogue. Down into those mines I went, found some cool things like copper ore, earth crystals, quartz, topaz, and struggled with the tiny inventory with all the distinct items. We've been given a quest to get to level five, which we quickly completed as the ladders down just sort of pop out of rocks at random and I was breaking a lot of rocks. After reaching level five, the quest updated to getting to level 40, so I kept going. Upon reaching level 10, I found some snazzy leather boots, which I promptly put on. This was, however, not before throwing them onto the ground because I couldn't fit them in my inventory because our inventory was tiny. I then got this dwarf scroll after vanquishing this slime. The game gives us a brief description of artifacts here, suggesting we visit the museum once more, so I plan to do just that. This elevator was serving as a sort of checkpoint, allowing entry to every fifth level once said level was accessed for the first time, so upon reaching level 15, it seemed like a good time to head home. That night I dreamed some more gamer dreams and received level 1 farming and level 1 mining, giving us scarecrow and fertilizer recipes and proficiency? Whatever that is. On day six, I was surprised by someone literally standing at my door, which I would come to find out is normal? Clint, standing there, confirmed to us that he existed, then left. In response, I checked my mail and found a letter of opportunity to join the Adventurer's Guild, should we slay 10 slimes. Making a mental note to go sliming later, I made and placed a scarecrow, which would supposedly deal with the crow problem. I watered the crops, made and placed a furnace, which I then used to smelt copper, which I did a lot. I picked up the scroll into my tiny inventory with ambitions to visit the museum, then made ambitious color-coded chests for all the metal bar types I was familiar with, as well as a chest for coal, because we would need coal to smelt those bars. I grabbed our new copper before heading into town, where Lewis took the time to show us the community center, which was in shambles. It was infested with small critters that looked somewhat like the slimes from the mines, but Lewis never got to see them, because I think we might have been the chosen one. After Lewis left, I ran over to this tablet, which I couldn't read. Unable to glean more information from this location, I decided to leave, remembering there was something magical I had to do first before I could read these. I headed over to the museum and was met with Gunther, lamenting over the emptiness of the museum's exhibit section. He noticed the scroll in our pockets and basically guilted us into donating it to the museum, which was fine with me. I'm a 100% completionist kind of gamer, so that meant this museum needed to be completely filled. Consequently, I donated dwarf scroll number one, as well as quartz, topaz, and earth crystal, because the museum wanted minerals as well. And speaking of minerals, I decided to head back to the mine to mine and remove a few slimes. There are also these awful bugs. Awful bugs. But those slimes and awful bugs were dealt with. With one less awful bug giving us an ancient seed, I think. It happens somewhere in the middle of this edit in this Let's Play episode, and I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I think that's how it happened. One of the slimes even gave us a small magnet ring, helping us pick up items from further away. That slime and nine others allowed our Adventurer's Guild quest to update, suggesting we needed to attend an initiation. I kept going a little further to level 20, found a steel sword in a chest, then went to get initiated. It was as simple as talking to Marlin, and just like that, we had access to a literal bounty board for monster eradication. That night I sold some fish, forage, stone, and wood, and hit the hay. We achieved level 1 combat that night, learning how to make a sturdy ring. Day 7 began with watering crops, and reading a letter from a wizard who seems to have an idea of what was going on. There was another letter from Robin about a well, which I promptly ignored and forgot about. I forgot about this one so hard that I didn't even remember that a well was a thing until editing this video. I wonder how many more of those there are going to be. I smelted some copper and then smelted some copper, and then decided not to let my dreams just be dreams, and went to Pierre's to buy the inventory upgrade to save me some trouble. Just as I was enjoying the roominess of my new pockets, I noticed the rather expensive second upgrade to the inventory and set my sights on D her pockets. Literally. On my way to meet the wizard, I found this extremely strange lady and her traveling cart. I didn't buy anything from her on day seven, but I will be buying things from her later. As I stepped into the wizard's tower, I remembered how I would begin to be able to read those tablets. This cutscene, one of the few cutscenes I'd seen in the game before, was absurd. The wizard identifies the existence of Junimos, the creatures which were in the community center, and we're told if we drink some mystery goop, we'll begin to understand these creatures and their writings. After verbally declining, I drank the mystery forest juice and became enlightened. After this revelation, I went back to the community center to read what the wizard said were scrolls, apparently. Not tablets, after all. I walked into the crafts room, which asked for the spring forage plants, which I henceforth called forageables in my head and shall do for you too. Completing the spring forage bundle rewarded us with 30 spring seeds, and I began to look at other bundles to complete namely the construction bundle. Upon exiting the scroll, two more rooms unlocked. The pantry, which had crops for each season, quality crops, and artisan items, and the fish tank, which had bundles for each type of fish. River, lake, ocean, night, 
and specialty. I left the parsnip in the spring crops bundle and went home. I decided to plant those new seeds and consequently nearly hoed it up until I became exhausted. But my tree baby bars saved the day. I planted and watered the new plants, all the while hunting more tree babies to make more food to keep me from being exhausted the whole way through. After some well-deserved sleep, I took the next day as a day to clear up more of the farm. I cut down trees consistently throughout the day so I could keep making field snacks to stay vigorous. During the spring cleaning, I noticed a note in the far northwest corner of the farm stating that dear old grandpa would return in our third year. This was rather daunting as I'd never even made it past the first week of summer and this was day eight so I wasn't even close to that. By the end of the day sleep came easily and our dreams of gamer prowess were filled with level three foraging and level two mining which gave us the tapper and staircase recipes. Day nine started with me examining the staircase recipe but rather than making any I moved right along to the community center. There I put wood and stone in the construction bundle and I also added a potato to the spring crops bundle. Then I was off again to the museum to drop off an amethyst and an ancient seed. And this time, we got some rewards. From what I could tell, certain items donated would yield specific rewards, like the ancient seed would give us a plantable ancient seed and the recipe to convert them. The rest of the items donated would contribute towards a running total, which, when met, would give a set track of rewards, like the amethyst earning us the cauliflower seeds. To date, I'm not sure if this is correct, as I still haven't been to the wiki. With this in mind, I went to crack open the geodes I found in the mines over at Clint's blacksmith's shop to hopefully get more minerals the donatable rocks, and more ores, the resource rocks, to smelt to crafting component metal bars. I got both, as well as a thunder egg, which I assumed was an artifact. I donated what I could and snagged another reward, this time melon seeds, which were to be planted in summer. I decided this meant we were ahead of the intended pacing of the game, and this of course meant to me I was obviously and indisputably a pro gamer. As pro gamers do, I went to the beach and found a clam and an oyster. I immediately gave the clam to a long-haired lad named Elliot, which prompted me to check the menu tabs of the game. Here I learned about the social tab, and how it tracks the gifts you give people. Then Elliot proceeded to give us a thought-provoking quote. Let's talk! A great idea can pass through your head when you least expect it. But if your mind is too busy, you might miss it. That was profound as f- After reflecting on my life choices, I wandered eastward to find another broken bridge. This one was smaller and set at a cost of 300 wood to fix. So I made a mental note to save wood for this purpose. I then brought that oyster back to the community center and turned it into the crab pot bundle in the fish tank area. This very bundle actually needed a clam. So I was again questioning my life choices. Painfully moving on, I started looking more carefully at the social tab, realizing there was a two gift per week and one talk per day structure to being social. Why don't they teach this kind of thing in school? I could have had way more friends. While there, I noticed I hadn't met Alex, the token jock of the town. I attempted to meet him, but couldn't go in his bedroom because I didn't know him well enough. Accepting my helplessness here, I decided to go back to the farm and unintentionally took my starter frustrations out on a cauliflower plant. But I had more, so I planted the new seeds. I spent the rest of the day chopping trees and smelting copper, and then brought the preceding wood to that broken bridge. I found more ocean forage, as I tended to call it in my head, sea urchins and coral and such, as well as a sweet new pier. Not having any idea what else to do with the newfound area, I had home and sold the ocean forage. The next day started with Marnie, a local purveyor of livestock standing directly in front of our door with a dog to give us. After some sufficient guilting, I accepted the dog and took the default name, believing that was just the name of the dog. One financial liability later, I decided to head into town and finally meet Alex who declared himself the sporty type. He assumed I wasn't and I was quick to tell him otherwise. He then proceeded to cop out rather quickly because his arm was sore. I see how it is, Alex. I spoke to Haley, who just grumbled about the town, then left to check the calendar for birthdays. Which, I must warn you, I did this a lot. I'll just call them birthday checks from now on. I went on to forage some daffodils and was shocked by how fast the time had passed on that day. It's locked. It's 6 p.m. It's so late. I bothered Abigail at a grave on the way home and then ended the day smelting some more copper. Day 11 started with a letter from Robin saying she had lost her axe. Fortunately, I remembered where I had found that in my trial run of the game, so I ran straight there and picked it up. Slightly surprised it wasn't a randomized thing. I also looked at this locked sewer, remembering there was some sort of cutscene about that, and like magic, I immediately caused that very cutscene. I still didn't probably know what that was all about, though, as I had never unlocked said sewer before. I went onward to try to complete the meeting everyone quest and assumed I had forgotten to meet Gunther and all the excitement. I gave it my best, but I couldn't walk up to him to speak to him properly, so I began to look in the social tab for somebody to meet. Turned out some green-haired lady was left and I had no idea where to find her. I asked the awkward man, who I have forever since voiced intentionally awkwardly, to make us a copper axe, to which he awkwardly responded that he would but it would take a couple of days. I left him to his work and went to Joja to compare prices to Pierre's store. I found that Pierre's was cheaper, at least for now. Luckily, in that very home, I found the green-haired lady, who had a name. 
Caroline. One more quest in the bag, and pro gamer status clearly maintained, I headed back to the farm and watered the crops. I then found I had a quest to give a person a gift, which I knew was going to be the beginning of a massive trial and error process. But I knew a little bit about Linus, the man in the tent, and how he loved foraging for food. So I foraged a leak and handed it to him, then went to Robin to return her axe. And while I was there, I claimed the quest reward and took a look at the fabled coop I was being told I needed to order. I then promptly ordered no such thing, went home, smelted some copper, and spent the rest of the day chopping wood. Because I really I realized I was going to need a bunch of that. For everything. While dreaming, I gazed at the piles of money I had made from today's harvest. I started the next day tending to the farm, as would soon become very normal. Day 12 yielded our first green beans, and I smelted more copper as per usual. A couple of letters came through, one from our dear mother packed with some awesome cookies, and another from Lewis letting us know about the Egg Festival tomorrow. This was one of the only two events I had any clue what would happen, but I knew we'd be hunting for eggs. I smelted a bit more copper, bringing us to a total of six bars, then I brought the green bean to the spring crop bundle in the community center. I also noticed I was getting hearts with people, and I made an effort to get more. But instead, I just found out some people don't like daffodils. One of the bundles in this room, the pantry, is the quality crops bundle. And it calls for five gold star crops from a few different seasons. I haven't explicitly pointed this out, but you may have noticed that some of the crops and or forageables that I've picked up have a little star next to them. This is to indicate their quality level. Throughout the playthrough, I deduced there were four different qualities. So far, at this point, I knew about three of them. A neutral quality, as I called it, which had no star. A silver quality, which had a silver star. And a gold one, that had a gold star. With that said, the only crop in the bundle from spring is the parsnip, so I decided to buy a bunch of parsnip seeds, 41 to be exact, and put them in the ground for growing. After watering them, I headed back to the mines, eating those awesome cookies for a quick burst of energy. Thanks, Mom. I ended up finding lots of copper, and lots of bugs, on the way to level 25, where I finally called it and ran home. Somewhere deep down in the mines, I found this rice shoot, which the game instructed me to plant near water. So I did, and then went off to get some well-deserved sleep. Today was the day. It was egg-finding time. I did the simple farm things, watering, harvesting, selling, and went to the festival. I wandered into town to find Pierre's shop outdoors, and saw he was now selling event things, including strawberry seeds, which I just had to get my hands on. I then proceeded to talk to everyone, silently hoping it would make them like me more. But who really knows? The last person I spoke to, Lewis, asked me if I was ready. And since there wasn't a selectable option that said, a gamer is always ready, I picked Yes. And then I frantically hunted small, partially covered egg textures for a good few seconds, determined to crush the dreams of any and all of the children of the town and become the town's egg-finding victor. Which I did. Sorry, children of the town. While I had done this event once before, I had never won, and I was so excited about the exclusive prize, and I found myself unbelievably unimpressed with the reward. What's the exclusive prize? Oh, straw hat? Is it the straw hat? Was the exclusive prize a straw hat? I haven't decided how I feel about that yet. It's very farmer-y, with the little hairlets coming out the side. We'll, we'll, have a, we'll have a chest for exclusive prizes and things uh, that we will never, ever, ever wear again. I decided to plant one of the strawberry seeds and save the other before heading off to sleep. On day 14, I woke to a notification that my copper axe was ready, so I took care of things on the farm as quickly as I could, harvesting the spring seeds, which had all grown into the forageables, smelting some copper, watering my dog, watering some worms, and discovered a lost book, which I would later discover isn't that weird. But I was shocked to learn that lost books could be dug up and would be added to the library's collection at the museum. After reading a bland book I had just dug up out of the ground, I had a bland conversation with Penny about the weather, but not before grabbing my sweet, sweet copper axe from Clint. After scoring this new upgrade, I headed home to test it and realized I hadn't watered the crops yet. I'd watered my dog. I'd watered some worms. The crops? Nah. I took care of that, noticed the cauliflower was ready, then tried watering this rice thoroughly, but it didn't do anything. But I wanted to do something, so I tested out the new shiny copper axe on a large stump which shattered with some effort, making the most lovely sound. Ooh, hardwood. I simply could not stop myself, so I ate field snacks and chopped as many as I could find until eventually, reverting to chopping normal stumps until nightfall. My deforestation thoroughly achieved, I decided to plant a few new trees in the north of the farm as an entrance and to have two of each type to tap for different tree saps. After my natural redecoration, I left the farm to bring the cauliflower to the community center, but stumbled into one of the other few cutscenes I had seen before, with Linus rooting around in the town's trash cans, almost getting caught by this cranky elderly fellow named George. We saved him and didn't shame him, and then consequently, he did it again, and got caught by a more kind, less cranky Gus, who gave him some food. None of this cutscene shocked me, but some in the future. You'll see me pull some faces, I assure you. After enabling what I think might have been theft, I headed over to the community center to turn in the cauliflower, completing the spring crops bundle, earning some speed-based fertilizer, and unlocking a whole new room with bundles of its own. 
the boiler room. In its bundles were lots of mines-based items, like monster drops, crystals from different areas, and smelted bars of copper, iron, and gold. So I tossed in a copper bar, and then also went to the crafts room to drop off this hardwood in the construction bundle, finishing that bundle, giving us a reward of a charcoal kiln that I never used. This also unlocked another room of sorts with its own bundles, the bulletin board, which had many bundles with a character from the town in their pictures. So I assumed these people would also likely like the things in these bundles as gifts. I went on my merry way, scheming to return to the mines and find a lot of those items for the boiler room in short time. That night I dreamed a dream I was a level 4 forager and now knew how to make a charcoal kiln and that I made some good money. I started day 15 reading a letter from Evelyn about crops dying at the end of the season. So I watered my crops and tried not to think about the existential dread of my crops' oncoming demise. To distract myself from the pain, I went to Robbins, talked to everybody there. Well, almost everybody. I also found out about salmon berries, which would be in so many bushes now. So like a good opportunist, I went to the mines. Strange decision, I know, but I did get a crab, as well as some sneakers that were strictly worse than my leather boots. And if you didn't think it was worth before, there were also bugs. <laughs> and then even a really dark part that was just absolutely awful. I'm not afraid of the dark or anything, I swear. I'd made it this far in my trial run, but man, was it unsettling. Not scary though, definitely not scary. Just a little after passing level 30, I decided to head home with more stone, a few weird things like a mushroom and a cave carrot, and a little bit more bug meat. That night, the gamer gods blessed us with level 2 combat, letting us learn how to make a life elixir. The next day, I took a look at this mysterious life elixir and decided to save mushrooms for it, because health at the cost of fungus sounded pretty good to me. And they say that you are what you eat, and I sure did want to be a fun guy. I harvested many parsnips and some green beans, and sold everything, except the gold parsnips. We were going to need those. I planted some mixed seeds I had found, splashed with a good H2O, and smelled melted some more copper. And now, the day after being told about them, I went and hunted for salmon berries. During the hunt, I stopped by the community center to drop off quartz and crab to the geologists and crab pot bundles respectively, as well as the red mushroom and cave carrot to the exotic foraging bundle. And looking at the bundle, it occurred to me the rest of this bundle could just be the various tree juices, as I have them written in my notes, so I'm going with it. Lastly, I turned in five gold star parsnips from all our parsnip harvesting this season to the quality crops bundle. I left, gave Linus the salmon berry, and then headed back to the mines. So maybe I did didn't really look for salmon berries. I made my way through that totally not scary darkness with the help of torches, which helped me score an amethyst as well as see a freaky rock monster, of which I would encounter several times. After having enough of that for a lifetime, I had a snack and went home. That night, we secured level 2 farming, which gave us the recipes for the mayonnaise machine and sprinkler, as well as level 3 mining, which gave us some weird lollipop I never used. Day 17 started with watering the dog bowl and crops, and then I quickly went out to drop something off at the community center. Along the way, I hunted down salmon berries. Once there, I turned in bat wings to the adventurer's bundle, and an earth crystal to the geologist's bundle. Then I headed back and sold the stuff I didn't need to turn in, and found another lost book, which I went and read. I had seen that sturdy ring recipe back on day 6, and I decided I wanted one of my own. So I headed back to the mines to gather bug meat, which for some reason was in the crafting requirements for a ring. During the work, I noticed my skills were growing, except for fishing, which was at a whole level zero. I had obviously not been having enough gamer dreams about fishing. Once I had everything I needed, I crafted a new sturdy ring and swapped out one of my two small magnet rings to put it on. I headed back to the dark portion of the mines, hoping to get to the end of it, not because I was scared or anything, and upon reaching level 40, I did find a not so dark area with a chest in it. It gave a slingshot, which I would probably put away and never use again. This completed the quest to get to level 40, so I checked for a reward, but now it had updated saying, just get to the bottom scrub get good. In the interest of therefore getting good, I headed downwards once more. It was in this new icy area that I began to gather iron finally. I'd only ever reached level 70 in my trial run, and I had almost entirely focused the mines in that trial run, so I was getting close to the end of all of my game knowledge. Still, I figured the iron was going to be important. The next morning, I sold the proceeds of the mining trip and smelted our first iron, then watered the crops and smelted more. I was very excited about the iron. I went out looking for trouble, and by trouble I mean more salmon berries. And I found trouble. I tried to give Linus some trouble, but couldn't. And then I noticed a weird, unminable rock that seemed to have a sign pointing towards it, as though it was once a pathway. I would later find this was indeed a direction to go, but for now, I decided it was beyond me. I stopped by Robbins, wondering about this mystical coop the quest gods were telling me to make, and found I needed to get some wood to make that happen. No true gamer stays away from such a challenge, so I got chopping. Soon I had the requisite wood, and ordered myself a fine fancy foul farm fabrication. 
the coop. A construction site was formed, and that was all the confirmation I needed to know it would get built. Spring in my step at my new incoming glory, I headed to the community center to drop off some things I had found in those icy depths of the mines. I turned in a crystal fruit to the winter foraging bundle, and a frozen tear to the geologist bundle. I attempted to chop this unchoppable tree, and learned I could take off my clothes in the middle of town. I walked back to farm, and cleared the farm until sleep time. During that sleep, I was required to make my first choice. We earned level 5 foraging, and I had to choose one of two perks. Forester, which would get us more wood, or Gatherer, which would get us more forageables. I decided after much thought that Gatherer would be better, as the amount of forage spawns couldn't really be controlled, while if I needed more wood, there were always more trees. New skills learned overnight, I awoke feeling powerful on day 19, and read my mail. This time, the letter was from Jody, and she wanted a cauliflower. Fortunately, two of mine had just matured, so I grabbed them, smelted some copper, and saw Robin was building our coop. I brought Jody her cauliflower, collected on the quest, and headed to Clint to bust open some geodes. I arrived with a full inventory, so I kept bouncing back and forth between the blacksmith and the museum to donate new minerals until I'd finally broken them all. This time, our rewards were a decorative standing geode and some lovely starfruit seeds, which I read were meant to be grown in the summer. After Sebastian told me he liked frogs, I stored away those seeds for summer and sold the extra stuff from the broken geodes. I smelted a bunch of copper and kept it clear the farm hoping to get more wood. Good thing I took the perk for not the wood gathering. Next morning I watered everything plus the trees because I was beginning to wonder if I had to water the trees when they were young as I hadn't seen any growth yet. I smelted some more copper and went off to see if there were any quests to do. I encountered a quest from Clint to go mine a bunch of copper. I thought maybe I could game the system. I had no idea how the timeliness of completing quests like this affected anything so I went and gathered all the copper then came back and accepted the quest. Turns out the quest tracks that you actually gather new ores after accepting it so my day ended with me feeling rather foolish but still at least having some copper to show for my efforts. That morning, the coop was done, but I'm not sure if I noticed. I harvested the rest of the cauliflowers, sold them and stuff from the mining trip, then I went to do the copper quest properly this time. On the way, I dropped off some more mines-based things to the community center. A winter route to the winter foraging bundle, and a frozen geode to the field research bundle. By this point, I was beginning to wonder if I could get all the winter things from the icy part of the mines. I went back into the mines and got all the copper I needed for the quest, left the mines, and went to Clint's to give him the ores. I was surprised when he looked them over and actually let us keep them. But that was good enough for me. I collected on the quests and processed the geodes I found during both trips into the mines. And I got an interesting batch of minerals. With this one, I had no idea how to pronounce. Jaguite? Jaguite? Is it a Jaguite? Jaguite? I sold what I didn't donate and smelted more copper after collecting the juicy new iron bars. I went to water my strawberry, which I for some reason hid behind my green beans, and ended up harvesting a strawberry. Then I impulsively smelted another copper, and another, which by this point was becoming a little bit too fun. I reviewed the artisan bundle because I remembered there was some kind of jelly in it, and I was now holding a fruit. And for those of you who want to play the strawberries are actually nuts game, it is classified as a fruit in the Stardew universe, so don't be that guy. The jelly in the bundle had no name, so I assumed it could be any kind of jelly. I went back to the mines to search for more of those winter forageables, and I left just a little bit too late. While sleeping on my floor, I learned how to make a bee house, and also a glowstone ring, and how to transmute copper into iron. The next day was a very mines focused day. The rain saved me the trouble of watering, so I got there early enough to reach level 50 and acquire tundra boots, which outclassed the leather boots. I continued far enough that I even used the staircase to quickly get to level 55. Then I left, sold some gems, and got some sleep. I reached level 3 combat during that night's gamer dreams. Day 23 started with a letter about the flower dance, which was the only other event I had seen, and apparently it would be happening tomorrow. With my heart full of dread of rejection, I went to the community center and took another look at the bulletin board bundles. I had an aquamarine, which I needed for the dye bundle, but I also needed one for the museum, as well as one to test if it would be a good gift for Emily, because her picture was in the dye bundle, so I saved it. But I did deposit solar essence to the adventures bundle, which unlocked another room of bundles the vault. This was the most surprising room so far as it simply contained a broken vault and a bunch of bundles which, rather than items, needed to be purchased by giving up a certain amount of G. What even is G, anyway? Is, is it gold? Anyway, I purchased the cheapest one of the bunch, costing 2500 G. This completed the bundle and gave us a prize of some cake. I was a bit underwhelmed by this prize until I noticed the energy recovery was actually quite high. Faith restored, I ran over to the museum and deposited a few new minerals, including the aquamarine as well as dwarf scroll number three, for all of which I received a painting. I didn't care much for the painting, but progress was progress and I wanted more of that. So I stopped by Clint's to process some more geodes and then order the copper pickaxe upgrade. I went back to the museum to deposit something called a ghost crystal, which I presume had been haunting that particular geode. <laughs> On the way home, I realized Gunther didn't ask for or want a refined quartz. Wait a minute, he didn't want this. He didn't want refined quartz. This is a mineral. This is a resource. We need this for something. 
Back at home, feeling excited about my realization, I hung my painting and moved my northmost trees downward. Not sure why I did this. I also grabbed an iron bar and took that to the community center to deposit into the blacksmith's bundle. After returning home, I realized how ridiculous it was that I was doing so much mining and only had one furnace. So I made more, smelted more iron, and went to sleep feeling smart that day. I genuinely cannot believe it took me till day 23 to make more furnaces, but... That's how it goes. I woke with the same ex- <laughs> I awoke on day 24 with the same existential dread I remember from the days of middle school dances. There was a dance, and nobody, nobody liked me enough to dance with me. I mean, just look at this. I'm practically a stranger. I went off for the dance knowing exactly what was about to happen to me, but I tried anyway. I stopped by the event shop, saw a rare crow I couldn't buy, died a little bit inside, and kept moving. I had a feeling getting all of the rare crows was an achievement, and as I wanted to get all the achievements, this was seemingly a setback. As you can see, in my trial run, I only ever got one achievement, the literal easiest one, to get a little bit of money. In the interest of giving it my best, I talked to everyone. No one would dance with me. Absolutely no one. So I watched everyone dance and noticed some obvious pairings between the people of the town that were single. I went home that night lonely, but not discouraged. The next day, I could feel the season getting close to its end, which was fairly intimidating, as I knew nothing about fall or winter, and barely anything about summer. I started harvesting a strawberry and beans, realizing I couldn't plant anything new, or it would just wilt in a couple of days. Then I picked up my mail to find a letter from a local purveyor of hats, as well as a letter from Mom with a little cash to set us up for a good summer. I actually watched the TV long enough to learn about fruit trees, but I'm not sure I retained any of it. I went by Clint's to get our new copper pickaxe and gave some gifts out, after the pain of rejection. Now that I have my one truest love, though, my pickaxe back in hand, I headed back to the mines, fought my way through an infested level, and found myself next to water, and a chest with a crystal dagger in it. I had really pushed it to make it to this level, though, and fell asleep at the top of the mines. I woke the next morning to find a letter from Linus about retrieving me in my mailbox, which it turned out I was going to have to get used to. I started testing the new crystal dagger, and noticed it had no cooldown, which I have to admit was rather exciting. I smelted three more iron, then took the aquamarine to the community center, this time to turn it into the dye bundle. I used the logic I mentioned before with the characters in the bulletin bundles, and gave a frozen and Geo to Demetrius, but he disliked it. Ashamed, I went back to the mines, starting this time at level 60. Our new weapon, the Crystal Dagger, got its debut on this run, and I soon learned right-clicking was very powerful with this weapon. Speaking of powerful weapons, I found a chest on level 70 with a new weapon, the Master Slingshot, which I promptly forgot about. These new levels, this cave biome I would refer to as Bricked Ice, this was as far as I'd ever gotten in the mines, and that was both exciting and terrifying. I didn't quite make it back to bed that night and passed out on the farm, dreaming about the combat level 4 I would use in those very mines. I woke up and smelted more iron. Smelting was becoming an obsession. Jojo sent me a letter letting me know they picked me up and charged me a fee to move me from my farm into my bed. How nice of them. I brought Jody some jade and took dwarf scroll number two, which I'd found in my spelunking, to the museum. I was in the giving mood, as I wanted to start focusing on getting hearts with as many of the townsfolk as possible. I started to give a topaz to Penny, then last second switched and gave this aquamarine to Haley instead, which she liked. Don't worry, I gave Penny the topaz after that, and she liked that also. I wanted to try my theory one more time with the bulletin board bundles and gift, so I went to give Emily an aquamarine this time, and I almost didn't because she was in her room, but she started to leave, so I hid and waited to surprise her. Uh, surprise! A birthday gift? Oh, yes! I didn't even know it was her birthday! My track record of giving stones to girls of the town was stellar, despite how strange that sounds. Ooh, do you like quartz? Hey, how'd you know I was hungry? What did I just give you? Did I not just give you quartz? <laughs> Wait! Wait, I just gave you quartz! Right? Am I going insane? Or did I just give you a crystal and you just said- Four for four on giving gemstones to people of the town, I went to get something for myself, hoping to make a good investment. I paid a visit to Marnie and bought a chicken, which I was shocked was a chick when I arrived home at the coop to see her. It was unreasonably cute and tiny, in fact. I remembered around this time to water the crops in Yogi's bowl, then went off in search of more shenanigans. I just I discovered the arcade, but was confused by the fact I could only use one machine. The other called for a skull-shaped key in order to operate it. On the way out, Willie mentioned the idea of expanding the shop's stock if the fishing scene got more lively. I took the hint, but delayed action because fishing was hard. I wanted to give more tangible progress a try, so I went and hit this weird rock on the east of the mine's entrance to see if it would budge, but my pick wasn't strong enough. Yet. The final day of spring began, and I started it by picking beans, and of course petting my new little chick, because how could I not? I had recently realized while perusing the social tab that there weren't just liked gifts, loved gifts existed, such as Emily's attitude towards Aquamarine. Speaking of Emily, it turns out I wasn't the only one in town having gamer dreams. What is going on? Whoa, what is happening right now? What are we doing? What is going on? What? What?
Dude, Ooh, what is happening? <laughs> is this a dream? I handled this situation by not handling it. I went over to Marnie's and bought the new chick some hay to eat and started looking at the sprinklers I had learned, maybe to craft some, which, thanks to my obsessive smelting, I was able to do immediately. I toyed around with a few different orientations of sprinklers because it seemed they would water one crop directly on each side of them, north, south, east, and west. I tried some patterns that would conserve farm space and some that would maximize sprinkler efficiency, and considering how much space was available and how few sprinklers I had, I went for the ladder. By the time my experimentations were through, it was time for sleep, and time to begin the next season. At last, on day 29, summer had arrived, and with it, new music. The persisting crops from spring had wilted upon summer's heat, and as I went to cut them, I realized my dagger wasn't going to cut it. Literally. I began building a new farm, this time with irrigation. I planted the melon and starfruit seeds I had earned from Gunther, as well as a few mixed seeds, put down a chest to store farm items in, and then watered the seeds because the sprinklers were only going to go off in the mornings, from what I could tell, and the morning had already passed. I even actually used fertilizer this time, not knowing what mechanically it would do. I found this little door for the chickens to walk through, which I thought was rather cute, then headed to Pierre's to buy some other seeds. When I walked in, I was greeted by the final cutscene I had ever seen before in this game. Morris, the Jojo gremlin, had come by to put Pierre out of business announcing a sale at Jojo Mart, causing the customers to leave Pierre's and investigate said sale. Morris was executing a classic big dog move, operate at a loss briefly to put local businesses out of business, then return to higher prices than the original local companies have been selling at. A nasty scheme for sure, but it was working. I resolved by that point not to buy a Jojo membership because even though Pierre had his flaws, I'd rather support the local business and town than an encroaching corporation who would use tactics like this. It was now personal. Kid. I went back to the mines for the rest of the day, finding this aquamarine. I later gave that to Emily, dropping it off to her at the saloon, before picking up a lost book on the way home. The next morning I was surprised by a new friend walking through the coop's gate. That little chick I had gotten just a few days ago was now a full-blown hen. No adolescent stage or anything. Just hen now. And it had laid an egg which I then promptly stared at, not knowing what to do with. I checked the bundles, but they only wanted big eggs. So with no idea what to do with this egg, I sold it. I headed over to Pierre's and bought more seeds, according to what the bundle wanted from me. Melons, which we already had, blueberries, tomatoes, and hot peppers. I bought those, headed home, planted them, and fertilized them with speed grow, which I assumed would make them grow speedily. Then I headed back to the community center to drop off a sweet pea I had found earlier to the summer foraging bundle. Then I headed towards the mines, and as I did, Linus asked a rather strange question, and we ended up finding another summer forage, the Spiceberry. I brought that back to the community center and then started heading to the mines again. But on the way, I found another summer forage, a grape. So I brought that back to the community center, completing that bundle, and receiving a lovely gift of 30 summer seeds. Emily told me she felt lazy today as I headed back to the farm. I made several more sprinklers and planted all the new seeds. I placed a few more scarecrows as I had no idea what their effective radius was. I grabbed a bunch of torches from all around the farm to put them in the farm farm, and watered everything I could before the mandated bedtime. The next day, after greeting the newest lady on the farm, I read a letter from Lewis about his lucky underwear being missing. I accepted his extremely strange request for me to find them and moved on with my day, going over to check the rock in the east of the mine's entrance, as I had read something in the comments that had a chance at helping us crack through it. I dove into the mines, hoping to make more progress through the bricked ice section, but found my dagger was a bit too short for skeleton quelling. However, the spirits of the valley graced me with a new option. Twice, actually, but I didn't notice until the second time. I had received a bone sword, and in the thrill, I immediately forgot about my crystal dagger, and before the hype had died, I found a coffee bean, which I saw was a seed, and assumed I would now have access to growing a thing that would make us go faster. I kept pushing, hoping for even more loot and plunder, when I encountered a new chest and a dramatic shift in mood. It was fiery, and there was a constant, ominous rumble. Yep. This would be the kind of place to find fire quartz, all right. Within this chest, I found some more lovely boots. Why did all the chests have either weapons or shoes in them? No matter, these new firewalker boots were superior to my existing tundra boots, so I swapped them out permanently. I stepped bravely into the new cave biome and found out very quickly that things down here hit very hard. But in exchange, gold and more gems. Even the bats down here were red, but one of them dropped a bomb, which I then brought back up to the entrance. In the comments, I had been recommended to use a bomb on this rock, and I was shocked to find it actually worked. I didn't have time to check the other side of it though, because 
sleep. This would not be the first time I would get hints in the comments, but they were usually sparse and or cryptic hints, which kept it fun for everyone. That night, we hit level 5 mining and had to make another choice, between getting more ores and getting more gems. I decided to take the gems-based one because gem spawns were rare, and if I needed more of a particular ore, I knew where to go. Day 32 was one of, if not the first morning I got to see the sprinklers actually working. I decided today to save the coffee bean and picked up my first gold quality egg. Speaking of gold, I grabbed the gold bar I had smelted last night, turning it into the blacksmith bundle and receiving a furnace for completing said bundle. I took another look at the fire quartz in the bundle and knew today had to be the day I would nab that thing. I dropped a red mushroom to the dye bundle before leaving and brought an emerald to the museum. I read more of the lost books, which contained some various fishing lore, and picked up this grape, which I gave to Abigail, who for some reason didn't know what to do with it, despite always being hungry. I headed back to the mines to check the new pathway, only to find a dwarf, and I had utterly no clue what they were saying. I also saw a strange cave off to the east that I couldn't access, but more on this later. I dove back into the mines I understood to get further and to get gold, as well as the crown prize I was after that day. Fire quartz. Prize in hand, I ran home a victor. The next morning I handled my winnings, smelting some, selling others, and gathering the egg of the day. Every single day after this day, with a few notable exceptions, I grabbed eggs. I'll just show you from now on, because otherwise I'll end up saying that I grabbed eggs about 66 more times. Then I took the flaming quartz to the community center, where I turned it into the geologist's bundle, completing it and receiving five omnigeodes. This also completed the last bundle in the room, and I wasn't sure what was gonna happen. Whoa! What? <laughs> Look at the- look at them! They're so happy! They're so- <gasps> We are the Junimos, keepers of the forest! Whoa! 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 The music's so sweet! I'm gonna cry! I actually have tears in my eyes. Oh! What's happening? <gasps> I'm uh... Oh. I knew it. I knew it was gonna happen. I'm not gonna lie, I just cried watching that back. I already read the script, and I'm now matching the script up to the video. <laughs> I'm crying again. Feeling like a good person, I soldiered onward, adding a purple mushroom to the field research bundle before I left. I gave a red mushroom to Emily based on her picture being next to one in the community center, but the math didn't math for this one. She hated it. I tried giving an Amigio to Abigail because she seemed to like rocks. She didn't like that. So I decided the only healthy thing to do was to stop giving the wrong things and go see what other monsters needed to be eradicated for no particular reason. I also saw some really awesome swords in the shop and decided I was going to get one of those. I tried one more time with the gift idea from the bulletin board stuff, thinking maybe it would sometimes work, and gave Demetrius a purple mushroom, which he liked. Acting on a positive upswing, I decided to go swing my sword in the mines, but I died. Too many ouches in one time frame, apparently. Somehow Linus found me, but I had lost items. I headed home, confused by the massive up and down that was today's emotions, grabbed my newly smelted gold, and headed to sleep. As I slept, I saw the Junimos working some kind of magic next to one of the broken minecarts, and as well, secured level 5 combat, choosing the perk that increased my crit chance by 50% over a blanket damage increase of 10%. I wanted to hit really hard when I hit really hard. I started off day 34 by bringing a hot pepper to the summer crop bundle, and a fire course to the museum. I ended up getting a very nice reward for this, a singing stone that sounded very much like an iPhone text tone. Oh! I processed some geodes, getting new gems, and iridium ore. This was in fact my first discovery of iridium, period. I had no idea there was going to be a tier above gold. I turned the new minerals into Gunther and tested out the new minecarts next to Clint's place. I went home with my new speedy capacity and realized I would need more hay. I decided it was time to get a silo because I was pretty sure that was going to be part of the hay gathering scheme. I did some ocean foraging, then put the singing stone down by the dog bowl to function as a bell for the dog to know his water bowl was full. I have no idea if this had any in-game effect, in fact I imagine it didn't, but it felt nice, so I kept doing it. I then decided to move the smelting operation to its own area. I recolored the chests and organized the ores, this time including a chest for iridium stuff, then headed back home for some much needed sleep. I started off the morning with the usual business, then put some tree tappers in the new trees. I tried giving a red mushroom to Demetrius since he liked the purple one, but he hated it. I noticed this new pathway up to the north which led to a train station and a sauna, of which I explored both thoroughly, but failed to gain much more than confusion and blocked pathways, and I guess a nice bath. Then, before 
before I had left, a train came through the station, flinging useful resources from its cars, giving geodes, ores, coal, and even a strange pair of leprechaun shoes. I assumed this would interact somehow with being lucky, but decided to save them and figure that out another time. I gave Penny some grapes I found, which she hated. I tried the same with Maru, which affected her normally? She didn't like them or dislike them. So there were five tiers of gifts then. Hate, dislike, normal, like, and love. I gave Haley a flower, which she liked, a reasonable response. Then gave a fire quartz to Abigail, which she liked and wanted to eat. Not a reasonable response. She then asked me a question about where I would want to go, and I lied, saying the beach because I thought she would like that, and her reaction indicated that this was not a reasonable response either. I decided after flubbing that to always answer honestly and not tailor my answers to the character, which I held to for the most part. I went home feeling childish, but I had some new green shoes, and I put them away for safekeeping. Next morning, the summer seeds had grown up, so I harvested and sold them. Some of the wheat was also mature, which required harvesting by scythe. I gave a sweet pea to Linus, hoping to improve hearts where I already had them. I then went back to Robin to order the silos construction, which I put in what I would later learn was a rather inconvenient spot. I gave sweet peas to people, hoping to get hearts where I didn't have them, and it turned out it was Gus's birthday. I also gave one to Haley in front of Alex, which surprisingly didn't start a fight. I did some foraging, sold some, and gave Clint a copper ore since he'd asked for some before. He probably got depressed. I had the depressed man process my geodes and received some new minerals as well as a whole helmet. There was a whole helmet in that rock. I donated what I could to the museum and Gunther gave me a hideous chair as thanks. As I was leaving, I found another artifact, a rusty spoon, and ran back to donate that too. Apparently a rusty spoon was an artifact. Okay, after some remarkably unhelpful reading, I made two mayonnaise machines, which I then placed next to the coop for convenience. I started making mayo with them, which I was surprised to see wasn't in the artisan bundle, and because I didn't need it, I sold it. Digging around in the UI, I noticed the collections section incorporated a what has been shipped section. So I proceeded to sell one of everything I had made that I hadn't sold before, including some ores, crops, and even eggs. I checked to see if it would update the list, but it hadn't yet, so I assumed it would be updated tomorrow. I went to sleep and was surprised by how much money I made doing this. More of the summer seeds grew by morning and I harvested them. Then I checked my mail like a good villager and found a letter in the mailbox with a fish in it. Accepting this as normal and saving the fish, I made new summer seeds from the harvest and replanted. I looked at the collections tab, new and filled out, and noticed I had missed wheat. I sold one wheat, grabbed iron bars to bring to Clint, and headed out to town. I gave the town some sweet peas and headed to Clint's, where I ordered the steel pickaxe upgrade. I brought Clint a sweet pea as well, which made him sigh. Clint was clearly troubled. More sweet peas were given, and I checked out the town's quest board. Alex wanted a Jojo Cola, so I did what any hometown athlete could do for themselves, and walked to the store and bought one. I brought it to him and he paid me for it. He paid me exactly as much as it cost. Thanks, Alex. I brought the largemouth bass I had been sent in the mail to the lake fish bundle. Then I headed home to grab all the equipment I didn't need to sell to the Adventurers Guild. It let me sell everything except the slingshots, and I'm still not sure why. On the way back home, I dropped by the mayors and learned about divorce as an option. Noted. Day 38 started with the silo being finished, so I tossed my bounty of four hay into it. Then I harvested a new plant, a radish, but it wasn't in any bundles, so I immediately sold it. I checked the mail, terrified I would find another fish flopping about in my mailbox, but it was just a letter about a new event, the luau, suggesting I bring an ingredient for the soup to impress the governor. This got me frantic, wondering what in the world to choose. I foraged, gave some of it away, and encountered this hat shop, which I admit I had seen before, but was still so weird to me. After a little more exploration and gift giving, I went to Marnie to purchase two new chickens and more hay to feed them. I went home, pet the new friends, and added the new hay to the silo. I started consistently making more mayo by this point, and made as many summer seeds as I could out of the forageables to plant. I decided to start selling sweet peas with quality, and keep the ones without quality to gift people. With that, I went to get more seeds from Pierre, but it was closed. So I went to give Maru a birthday gift, but she wasn't home. I wandered around that whole day, not sure where to find who, until by nighttime, I finally found Maru stargazing, where I gave her sweet pea. I checked on my new sleeping chickens, then went off to sleep myself, dreaming about new foraging powers like making fall seeds and lightning rods. The next morning, another person was weirdly standing outside our door at the crack of dawn, this time with an offer and a choice. Demetrius wanted to set up something in our farm cave, either something to attract fruit bats and score us some left-behind fruit, or something to grow mushrooms in for every day. I deliberated this one thoroughly because I didn't have either of these things, but eventually the fungal choice seemed clear. I decided this because I knew fruit 
trees existed, and had no clear understanding of how else I would get mushrooms beyond random chance in the mines. Since I could guarantee myself fruit later, I'd make sure I'd guarantee myself both later on by picking mushrooms now. New cave plans underway, I set to work on making a lightning rod. After grabbing the supplies, I encountered our first big egg, which the bundle did want. I also harvested our first tomatoes, crafted and placed our first lightning rod, sold most of the tomatoes, and headed off to the community center to turn in the large brown egg to the animal bundle, and the tomato to the summer crops bundle. Then it was off to the luau, where I saw the whole town again, plus this weird guy, the governor. There was a limited shop, but I had no money for any of it. Again, neither did I have anything special for the soup, so I tossed the tomato in, thinking of a lovely tomato bisque. Then I talked to everyone, even the disturbing man. After much conversation, the strange governor tried the soup and decided it was just average. Apparently, next year, it would be up to me to carry this town's soup on my back. Feeling just average, I went home and sold my average tomatoes and got some average sleep. But at least I learned how to make a preserves jar that night. On the morning of day 40, I realized big eggs were here to stay. And I got some pine tar from a pine tree. I had recalled this was in the exotic foraging bundle and decided I would just do all the tree juices for the remaining three slots in it. Just as I felt like I was starting to understand this world and my place in it, the scarecrows spoke to me. Accepting this as normal, I decided, since big eggs were here to stay, I'd try making mayo out of them. I dropped pine tar off to the community center, then headed to Clint's to pick up my new steel pickaxe. I tried gathering our new shrooms from the cave, found out big eggs make gold quality mayo, and sold both. I tried using the sweet new pickaxe on the large rocks on the farm, and was thrilled to finally be able to break them down. I planted a few things, heading back to the mines, and scored big time. Gems, gold, and even a chest at level 90 with a new sword called the Obsidian Edge. It was slower, but more powerful, and seemed the right choice. I continued a little further in the mines that night, then bailed at level 95. I went home with the plan to sell, then passed out by the selling box because I'm really good at keeping track of time. Day 41 began with a rainy day of harvesting melons, and a letter from Joja kindly billing me for picking me up from my own farm. I sold the melons except the gold ones, which I was saving for the quality set of five. The new chickens had grown up, and I got the gold to smelton. I took care of all the farm things I could, getting into the groove of summer. Then I brought a diamond to the museum. I grabbed more melon seeds from Pierre to keep working towards the quality melons and headed home to plant them. I decided to try out this new preserves jar while doing more farm things. I brought the melon to the summer crops bundle, then headed to the beach and found an old mariner talking cryptically. Clueless on this, I left and brought a mussel to the crab pot bundle. I brought Alex a safe gift for his birthday and then headed home. I sold stuff, got some blueberries, which I was surprised to learn drop in bunches of them, sold some gold bars, and headed to Clint's to see about upgrades. But the blacksmith's was closed, so I took a blueberry to the summer crops bundle, completing it and receiving the first quality sprinkler. I started to sell the blueberries, but decided to save them to make jelly out of them. <laughs> Blueberry preserves, baby. I set up the sprinkler back at the farm, hoeing, grabbing mushrooms in between, clearing more farm, fertilizing, and planting a measly one mixed seed. But we got some money. Cool. Money! I ran outside next morning, wanting to see the new sprinkler in action, then enjoyed a letter in the mail about being featured in the Stardew Valley Tribune. Whatever that is. Pam sent us a letter as well, asking for a pale ale which I then ignored. I got some new resources this day, like a battery, oak resin, and three eggs, because eggs were definitely new. I gathered up some gold bars, harvested the one star fruit, and started away with the fruit to preserve. I headed off to Clint's, but I didn't get very far, as Emily was having a moment. These birds flew overhead, and one of them didn't quite do the bird thing correctly. Or maybe it did the bird thing perfectly. Kind of depends on your perspective on birds. She decided to take care of this bird and nurse it back to health. After that, I headed to Clint's to order the gold pickaxe. But it was too expensive, so I ordered the copper trash can instead. This would apparently Apparently improved the percentage of money value we would get if we tossed an item in the trash can in our inventory. Seemed useful to me. I noticed Emily and I were at four hearts and began to suspect cutscenes might relate to that. I took the oak resin to the exotic foraging bundle and I went to inspect the Emily situation further and found I could now open her door in not a creepy way. I I swear. So I of course walked in and played with the parrot. I headed to Pierre's to buy more melons, and I also grabbed some grass stars while I was there. From there, I headed to Marnie's and bought another chicken. Then I headed home and tried something I learned from the comments. Apparently, if you use a scythe, once you have a silo on grass, then you get hay, and it teleports into the silo. I don't think I was gonna figure that one out. So I went ahead and filled the silo, then planted the melons and moved the mayo machines to a better spot. At the end of the day, I remembered the mushrooms and got a moral. I would forget about these mushrooms nearly constantly, but today it had given a mushroom in the exotic foraging bundle. So I brought it to the bundle, completing it and receiving five autumn's bounty, a seemingly very nutritious food. On day 43, it started to really occur to me that there was an entire pillar of this game I was completely ignoring. 
fishing. I decided today I'd put a dent in that. But first, I made an observation. Corn was in two of the bundles, fall crops and quality crops, and could grow in summer and fall. So I figured it wouldn't weather when the season changed. Curious. Very curious. I went to the beach to experiment with fishing, but instead, Alex wanted to be sporty, and I wanted to be sporty too. Unfortunately, the game didn't want me to be sporty. So after getting my fragile eagle... <laughs> so after getting my fragile... <laughs> So after getting my ego bruised enough to assert my own sportiness, I walked about the beach, gave flowers out, and found a clam. I went ahead and brought this clam to the crab pot bundle and took a look at what other fish I needed to get a hold of. I decided the river fish were my best bet and tried my luck giving gifts to people as they passed by. I did catch some fish, a few during the day and a few during the night, and brought what ended up being two fish to the bundles, a sunfish to the river fishing bundle and a brim to the night fishing bundle. Then I headed home and sold everything else. That night, I finally gained my first level in fishing. The next day was a day for poor decisions and growth great discovery. I got some more tree juice, this time it was the maple kind, which I nearly dismissed, as we had already completed the exotic foraging bundle, but I noticed on a cursory inspection, it was in the chef's bundle. Spicy. I'd be bringing that soon, but first, I needed to get distracted doing other things. I started that distraction journey with the mail from mom, continued it with getting my first batch of jelly and taking care of a few things on the farm, then heading into town to give gifts and get a new trash can from Clint. Then, of course, it was mine's time, all while carrying this maple syrup in my inventory. In the mines, I had a skill issue and paid the price for it. But somehow, I didn't lose the syrup or the jelly, which I had also been carrying this whole time. I decided to turn these two things in before doing anything else, then had a bountiful snack and headed back into the mines. This time, sans skill issue, plus one staircase, I made it to level 100 to discover a new chest with something I could have never expected inside. Whoa. Whoa, what just happened? I didn't say to eat that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did my max energy just get increased or something? I found a star drop. It's strange, but the taste reminds you of gold. Your maximum energy level has increased. Then, after eating this extremely rare liquid gold tasting energy providing fruit, I passed out. Makes sense, right? But level six mining, and with it, the recipe for bombs. Day 45, I decided to keep pushing the mines. While taking care of all the different things on the farm, I checked what the cost of making more furnaces would be, and they had one requirement I didn't have, copper ore. Because I'd been so fervent with smelting, I would have to go back to the mines to get ore. Driven by progress, I headed to level 100, instead of the highest levels for easy copper. I tried my hand at fishing in this weird red water, and didn't get anything except trash. Not knowing something very important, I trashed all of this trash, and headed onwards into the depths. This starred slime dropped dark boots, which I decided to wear from now on. I made it all the way to level 105 before bailing for the day, and I decided before heading home to try my hand at lake fishing. Uh, uh, it was agreeable. Uh, uh. Chub. I got a, I got a, I got a chub. And I got one of those. I also managed to find a bullhead, which I took to the lake fish bundle. When I got home, I wasn't swimming in copper, but I had more gold, and I definitely made it home. That night in the dirt, I dreamt about different kinds of eggs, scoring level 6 combat. The 18th of summer was when chaos really started to settle in. I started the day off confused by a dead plant on the farm, but also secured a gold corn for the quality bundles. I took care of the plants and hens, even replanting before heading to town and checking the quest board. Willie had asked for green algae, so I grabbed a couple from home and headed his way. I stopped by the museum to read more books, and drop off a ruby, for which we earned pumpkin seeds. These were for fall, so I just pocketed them on my way to Willie. But I stopped by Emily's house to give gifts, and I said hello to the parrot, gave some gems to the girls, and finally headed to Willie's for real. He took the time to suggest a training rod to me, and also implied heavily that he had a non-working sea vessel in the back of his shack. I sold him what ocean forage I'd snagged along the way, and almost forgot to give him the algae. Then I gave it to him twice to see if he'd like it as a non-quest gift. He hated it. Shocked someone could want something and hate something at the same time, I decided to go fishing. Fishing took the rest of the day up, but I did secure the second achievement in the game. Fisherman, for catching 10 different species of fish. Caught a red snapper in the ocean, a chub and a carp in the lake, and deposited them into the ocean fishing, field research, and lake fishing bundles respectively. As the day was winding down, I noticed the common mushroom was in the fall foraging bundle. I had been harvesting those frequently from the mushroom cave, so I boldly ran one of those over to the community center as well, barely making it back in time for sleep. That night, I dreamed of being a better fisherman and making some good money. The next day I went to work, taking care of all the usual farm things in the morning before running off to the community center to drop off hay to the fodder bundle. Then over to Clint's to order the golden pickaxe upgrade. I went to Robin's after that to see about another farm building, but stumbled into a Maru cutscene instead. But Maru wasn't the only one in it. Maru's a good kid. She's my special little girl. What's happening right now? I wouldn't want anything getting in the way of her bright future. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just some food for thought. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's right. Demetrius was trying to get me to stop talking to his daughter. After that lovely conversation, I decided to talk to Robin about why I came which was the barn. I just wanted to know what it cost, man. Feeling like I was trespassing at this point, I gave Demetrius a flower and found out it was his birthday. He liked the flower, so despite the sternness from before, we ended up gaining hearts. I gave a flower to his wife for good measure on the way out, which in hindsight might have been a bit weird, but that's okay. With dates in my mind, I decided to look at the calendar and noticed there was some weird dance coming up. Hopefully I wouldn't strike out this time. I headed over to Pierre's upon looking at the fodder bundle and bought weed seeds. Oh, sh**. <laughs> Not those. I headed over to Pierre's upon looking at the fodder bundle and bought wheat seeds to get the 10 wheat I needed for it. I headed home and went to work expanding the farm to accommodate more crops, including wheat. Moving the furnaces in the process, I decided after this to cut some trees, as the barn I'd looked at would be needing wood. I continued to turn the supplies of eggs and jelly during this, even tossing the starfruit in for jelly making. I wanted to know what the differences were for prices of crops versus processed crops, so I sold a blueberry and blueberry jelly before heading to bed to compare. That night, I hit level 5 farming, required a choice. I decided to choose tiller in this instance because crops seemed more scalable than animal products. Also, blueberry jam turned out to be three times the value of a blueberry. The 20th of summer started with watering the new part of the farm I'd added yesterday that didn't yet have sprinklers, and then immediately continued with three pieces of mail. One from Willie, letting us know his fishing-related wares had expanded, and two from Demetrius about samples. In one, he gave us a sample, and the other, he was asking for a melon sample. The comments had also mentioned something about using a lightning rod to keep grass alive in your animal buildings, so I moved this lightning rod for that reason. I let the drop off the oak resin I'd picked up on the farm to the community center because it was in more than one bundle, but I first ran into a cutscene with Penny. This was a cutscene about somebody being cranky and not liking being helped, somebody else not realizing that and insisting to help. After that little debacle, I turned oak resin into the enchanter's bundle, answered a weird question from Haley, and took to fishing. I ended that night selling a whole bunch of marine stuff and making some decent money from it. I started off day 49, heading over to Clint's to pick up our new gold pickaxe, and for the first time saw what the iridium tools looked like. And had a very moving conversation with Alex and his dog. Alex apparently had some family troubles, and this was something that I was able to relate to, more than necessarily I was prepared for in the moment. And then I cleared the farm for hours. I also found this rusty spur whilst clearing the farm. Today marked the halfway point. Today would be the last day of the first half of this challenge. If you made it this far, you may have realized I initially had no idea I would be doing this as a 100 days video or challenge. I was still just learning how to make a let's play when this first started. I did happen, however, to hit an awesome goal exactly on day 50. But I have had a wild time creating this video. Literally two months of work, not counting the recording and editing of the original Let's Play videos, two months of learning and editing this video alone. So if you like this video, like you are genuinely enjoying it, please press the like button so YouTube knows that I did a good job so more people can get to see it and enjoy it too. Thanks. Now, what did I do on the halfway day, you ask? Well, after the animals and the plants, of which I sold most, I took the rusty spur to the museum. I also stopped by Clint's to order the steel axe upgrade. But when I got there, I realized I didn't have enough money. So I sold him some iron and then I had enough money, but now I didn't have enough iron. So I went home, got more iron and came back finally ordering the steel axe. Hey, on, Watson, you said something cool happened. Yes, because now I finally had my pickaxe again. And this time it was golden with gumption and confidence, I strode back to the mines. I found plenty of gold, finally ate that strange bun that just been floating in my inventory, and made it down five levels to level 110, finding another chest. This one had space boots in it, even more powerful than the dark boots, so I made the permanent switch. But I wanted to see more, and the comments had been hinting that the bottom was now only 10 levels away. I kept pushing on despite the time, swinging and swinging, using a staircase occasionally, until finally we reached the bottom of the mines. It's a key! That's a key! You found the skull key! You're not sure what it's for, but it seems important. It's mad at your wallet. I know exactly what it's for. But I would soon learn that I had no idea of the most important thing this key does. I explored these weird snakes, wondering if they had any use, but found nothing extra. Then I ran home and almost made it. Day 51 began, and I technically played this first hour twice. I had made a point to not reset days, but before this episode had ended, I really wanted to check out the new achievement, Cowpoke, and my new key before ending the episode. At the beginning of the real Day 51, I noticed a new quest as well. Still confidently wrong that I knew what this was about, I started working the farm, plants and animals, including harvesting another gold melon and our first big white egg, and headed to town to give some gifts. Ego swelling, I stepped into the saloon to use the key for what I knew the key was for. The 
second arcade machine. And technically, I was right. The key unlocked access to a new game called Junimo Kart, which I quickly learned was surprisingly difficult. But this wasn't the most important thing the key did. I didn't even know it had another purpose at this point. Stay tuned. I decided to head to the community center to deposit the big white egg to the animal bundle. And while I was there, I checked the remaining requirements for that bundle, deciding I definitely needed that barn. At about this point, I had begun to realize, to 100% this game, not only would I need to complete this community center, I would need to get hearts with everyone. 10 hearts with everyone. You might be saying, Watson, that means you'd have to date all the single people. Yeah. It does. I don't think I'd realized that awful truth by this point yet, so I started innocently giving gifts to everybody I could, every day I could, to increase the hearts. I'll just keep showing the giftings and transition moments as I have been, and point out cool ones like the discovery that Abigail loves Amethyst, and I'll let you know what happens as a result of my actions. After my boundless generosity, I went back to the mines to check that bottom floor of snakes one more time, came up empty once again, and decided to mine a little more before going home, ending up a few diamonds and gold richer. After selling things per usual, sleep brought level 7 in mining, and I I quietly began to wonder to myself, why was the game paced such that mining level wouldn't max near the bottom of the mines? Had I rushed it? I had much to learn, but day 52 wasn't the day for those answers. Today was the day for a new axe. So after tending to the farm's daily duties, I headed to Clint and received the new and improved steel axe. I had Clint process some geodes while there and discovered this whole laptop, or excuse me, a dwarf gadget out of a rock. We also got some rocks out of the rocks. I brought all of this, laptop uh, gadget included, to the museum to donate and got another achievement, this time for donating 40 things called treasure trove. Reaching this point came with two rewards, a vase and a rare crow. The rare crow stated it was eight out of eight. So I determined I would need to collect them all somehow. I gave some gifts and headed home, putting the new rare crow onto the farm and swapping in the vase in place of the bowl in our comfy home. I sold everything I could, found out not all trains drop stuff, gave more gifts and noticed that there was some character development going on. It means more watering work for you, huh? Or do you enjoy the sunny weather? You're thinking about me now. You're talking to me about me instead of talking to me about you. That's very interesting, developer of game. Before the day ended, I noticed it was Willie's birthday and ran over to give him something he didn't like. Oops. Anyway, this screen should give you an idea of how many gifts I have been giving. Feeling generous, I headed home to sell things and finally used that new axe I mentioned. The axe had the power to chop these big logs, and so I chopped every single one I could find before passing out again. That night, I reached level 7 foraging and even made some decent money. Next morning, I harvested the last gold melon and the last of the wheat we needed for the community center. I got a couple letters from Linus, in one of which he taught us how to cook sashimi. We also got a letter from George, saying he wanted a hot pepper for his knees? Far be it for me to judge, I accepted the quest and wondered how on earth a pepper helped knees. I took care of the animals and watered our unsprinklered section of the farm before heading off to deposit the wheat to the fodder bundle and five gold melons to the quality crops bundle. After this, I headed to Pierre with an aspiration for deeper pockets. My dreams came true as I sold him some of the things in my pockets and bought a second and final inventory upgrade. We now had pockets that were exactly 36 deep. Nice. I then headed home to put the first touch on what would soon be a massive organization overhaul. I started by sorting out tree-related items into this chest. Then I spent the rest of the time clearing out the farm, which I time-lapsed in the Let's Play. Day 54, I spent entirely just harvesting the farm, clearing the farm, and getting a bunch of bug meat for bait because bug meat could be crafted into bait. I also sold a bunch of things, and the money was solid. I spent the penultimate day of summer enhancing the farm. After taking care of the chickens, like I usually did every morning, I realized making four eggs every day but having two mayo machines was not ideal. I started setting to work on improvements there, and realized I had an ancient seed in my inventory. Deciding I must have gotten that yesterday from the bug meat gathering, I crafted it into a plantable seed and received a new achievement, DIY. The description of this read craft 15 different items, but I was sure I had crafted ancient seeds before. I I later decided that different didn't mean distinct in this instance, and that I had crafted a total of 15 things, but there were many more things to craft today. Caroline sent us a potato, which I sold along with some of what I harvested from the farm. I chose not to replant because I assumed summer crops would wither at the beginning of fall, just like the spring ones had at summer's inception. I stored the ancient seeds and watered the corn, because I believed they would be an exception in terms of withering. I wanted to craft a lot of things, but I didn't have everything I needed, so I crafted what I could with what I had on hand. I started with two new furnaces, smelting copper in all six for 
good measure. I then scrounged up some wood and made a new mayo machine, bringing our total to three, and grabbed the newly smelted copper to make a fourth. With this, I decided to move the machines to what I hoped would be a slightly more convenient location. I also crafted five new preserves jars and repositioned the preserving area down here. Using four more copper I'd queued after the mayo machines, I also made four sprinklers to cover the recent expansion to the farm. After placing the fruit in the jars, I grabbed our mushrooms and set out the clints, feeling productive and well prepared for fall. I paid to have my special rocks cracked, gave one new mineral from my special rocks to the museum, and gave a not so new one to Haley. Feeling a giving mood coming on, I led with a pepper to the enigmatic George. Truly still wondering how a pepper could help, I handed him what he asked for. I also gave him a flower, which he didn't like. I went absolutely wild on the giving, though not entirely successfully, and headed home, making bait for my fishing along the way. I was confused soon, though, because I couldn't attach this bait to the rod. I decided I might need to get one of those wares Willie had been talking about adding to the shop's stock. I stored it all away for now, in a designated fishing chest, as I had Fall's onset to concern myself with currently. The final day of summer was upon us, and as a consequence, we got a letter about the dance. The dance wasn't exactly what I had first thought, however, as the jellies were a species of jellyfish that would be doing the dancing on the beach tonight as they passed by. Looking forward to this turn of events, literally, I started off the day by harvesting like normal, but I ended up making a few other interesting discoveries on this day. Firstly, I gave Demetrius the melon he had requested, while stopping by Robbins to see the prize of a barn again. I didn't have enough wood or stone so I headed out to fix that. But first, I gave some gifts out, learning Abigail didn't just like to eat pretty rocks. Abigail! Hey, how'd you know I was hungry? Do you eat everything? Yet, as I remembered to collect the reward for the melon quest, I noticed something odd. I still had the Skull Key quest. This made me realize that the Skull Key had to have another purpose. A more important purpose. A few gifts later, I found myself at the Adventurer's Guild, on a hunch there were better swords in the shop, as the quality of the swords available had been improving as I descended in the mines. I scrolled through to find the Lava Katana, Based on this, the quest still being available, and some loose hinting in the comments, I decided there might be a new mines in our future, and that I needed to get this sword before this year, or these hundred days, were over. I headed back to the mines to get stone for that barn I mentioned, and chose the place where the monsters dropped coal, because I was going to need a lot of that, all the time. Just before the event was scheduled to start, I left the mines and headed to the beach to see what all the fuss was about, and I can say with absolute certainty, it was worth the fuss. After speaking with everyone of the sanctity of the situation, I spoke to Lewis, who sent this little boat out, drawing these jellyfish in. And this was the gorgeous result. Oh. Oh, there's a lot more. Wow. Wow. The glow of summer has faded now, and the moonlight jellies carry on toward the great unknown. And so with that, summer came to an end. Fall's beauty absolutely shocked me, and I couldn't have my dead plants marring that. Fall had new forageables, the common mushroom I had noticed before, as well as the plum, the hazelnut, and the blackberry. I gathered up some of these on my way to the mines, hoping to quickly get enough stone for the barn, and enjoy the rest of my time basking in Fall's orange glow. After getting plenty of stone and some copper along the way, I headed to Robin's to order the barn. One or two clicks later, construction had begun, and I was thrilled. I swung by the community center to put the three new forageables into the Fall foraging bundle, earning myself some Fall seeds at the perfect time. I headed down to the ocean, giving gifts along the way, and once there, picked up a bunch of stuff. And I also caught a can's worth of sardines. I headed back to the good old CC and dropped off a sardine in the ocean fishing bundle. I headed home to sell stuff, cleared up the rest of the farm, smelted three iron, moved the last preserves jar, and planted the new fall seeds. Then I grabbed that iron and made three new sprinklers to expand the farm just a bit more so we can make even more cash than this. The next day on the farm, I wasn't alone, as Robin was on the scene, swinging her hammer at this exact spot all morning long as I did the day's tasks. I was expressing my disinterest in fertilizers, and this happened. Speed grow. Wah. Retaining your soil. Why? <laughs> that was incredible timing. Taking that as a cue to fertilize things, I did. Even unplanted ground. Then I headed to town to find out Robin had been pulling double shifts. Lewis and Robin had added a large quest board to town. It was for bigger sized quests that, as I would learn, would change once a week rather than daily. Upon first glance, I decided against picking one, not realizing they wouldn't change until next week. Curious instead about a new fishing rod, I headed to Willie's and picked up a new tool, the fiberglass rod, as it appeared to be able to use bait. I also gave Willie a pine 
pinecone, which he didn't hate. I tried out fishing for the first time with bait and had no idea what the effect was. But I caught a tilapia, which was indeed in the ocean fishing bundle. That weird old guy was back again too, and I still don't know why. I headed to Pierre's hoping to get new fall seeds and ended up stumbling into Abigail's room for a quality time cutscene in which we play one of the arcade games. I helped her through the first level and was sad we couldn't keep playing together afterwards. Cutscene complete, I spoke to Pierre to purchase the seeds for what the fall crops bundle would need. Eggplants, pumpkins, and yams. I also decided to try some other crops, like bok choy, cranberries, amaranth, fairy, and even this grass starter recipe. Then I remembered about saplings, which I now couldn't afford. After returning home, planting the new crops, and selling more things, I headed to the community center to drop off a tilapia and check the remaining marine requirements for the aquarium set of bundles. I decided to go back and fish in the ocean more, fishing up my very first albacore, which was a tough catch, but sadly, not in any bundles. I did snag an eel though, which was in the night fishing bundle. I brought this bad boy to the CC so fast, I then switched to the lake, assuming that I had caught a night fish in the ocean and the river, that perhaps a third night fish would be found in the lake. My intuition was correct as I reeled in this walleye, which I then also took said bad boy to aforementioned CC place. This completed the night fishing bundle, scoring us a small glow ring. I then headed home, sold the extra fish, and got some well-deserved sleep. That night we leveled hard, getting both level 6 in farming, as well as level 3 in fishing, collectively enabling us to craft the quality sprinkler and the cheese press, as well as the crab pot and the dish of the sea. That recipe for that new sprinkler was fresh on the mind on day 59, and I wanted to do something about it. First I flexed the new rod, and then read a letter from Marnie about needing amaranth. Then I took a new look at the recipe for the quality sprinkler. I saw it would require iron, gold, and refined quartz. I didn't know where to get the quartz, but I sure knew where to get the other two. After harvesting and selling some corn, I went to the mines to get as much iron and gold as I could muster. And I ended up getting plenty of those two and more, finding gems, a ghost fish, and coal along the way. When my health was finally too low to continue, I headed to the Adventurer's Guild to see what monsters needed slaying. I sold some surplus from the mines trip while there, and headed home to tend to the rest of the farm, and of course, smelt my proceeds from the trip. I proceeded to make a bunch of fertilizer from stored up sap from all that farm clearing, and found out crops that aren't in their seed stage could not be fertilized. I'd have to do that ahead of time next time. That night though, the Gamer Dreams were back, bringing us to level 7 combat. On day 60, I woke up itching to sprinkle my crops with more quality. You know what I mean? I made two quality sprinklers, as that was all I could with the refined quartz I had. Once that and the daily farm tasks were sorted, I headed to the community center to turn in the ghost fish to the specialty fish bundle. But little did I know, there was much more fishing to be done today. I purchased the 5000G vault bundle while there, receiving, coincidentally, quality fertilizer, just after I fertilized everything. I gave out some topaz from yesterday's spelunking as I walked over to the big quest board, and was surprised to find the same quest with simply less time to do them. I decided therein to choose one, deciding on one from Demetrius about reducing overpopulated salmon in the valley's rivers by exactly 10. I found myself fishing in fall, which was remarkably peaceful. After catching a bunch of fish, including three salmon, Sam walked up to watch. Sam, of all people. I caught more fish, including two more salmon, a tiger trout, and even somehow an aquamarine. By then though, night had fallen, and I was seemingly only getting night fish. I decided to call it on salmon for today, being satisfied with a halfway done quest in one day that I had five more days to do. I headed home to gather the farm's daily yield and sold it all, along with the fish, except for the tiger trout, which I actually needed for the community center. I dropped off the trout in the river fish bundle, and headed home to sleep, and gander at a good day's money. I decided to check the calendar first on day 61, knowing it was going to be a very busy day today. And so, after determining that it was indeed Elliot's birthday, I headed home to check out our brand new barn. After the usual suspects of farm duties, I walked around inside our new barn, then headed to Marnie's to buy some cows. I bought four outright, then immediately headed to the river to polish off the other half of that salmon depopulation we'd quested to do. I managed to snag this nautilus fossil among the salmon, and completed the quest with flying fish. Uh, colors. Flying colors. After this, I headed down to the ocean to give Elliot a gift of a dazzling ruby, and sell the fish and marine stuff to Willie, from whom I then bought a crab pot, thinking I could get crab pot stuff for the crab pot bundle this way. But I didn't read the description. I decided to buy some trout soup from him as well, hoping I could improve my fishing this way, as it gave a temporary plus one buff to fishing. I took that snazzy Nautilus fossil to the museum, then I gave Caroline this gift I just knew she would love. She hated it. I decided to head to the mines to try my hand at cave lake fishing, and once again, only got trash. But this time, I also got a ghost fish. I headed home, throwing away the trash, and went to visit my sleeping new cows before sleeping myself, dreaming of being a better angler and learning how to recycle things. The next morning, I decided to meet the cows while they were awake this time, 
I gave him pets and did the farm routine, which included more petting. I harvested plenty of corn and bok choy, selling all but the gold corn, which would be for the quality crops bundle. Demetrius thanked us for murdering 10 specific fish by teaching us by mail how to make a farm computer. It needed one of those fancy laptops that came from rocks though, so I couldn't make it yet. Shane also sent us a pizza through the mail. What's up with this town and mailing everything? I quickly snagged the day's quest of copper collection, then I collected the mayo flawlessly. I headed to Marnie to buy a milk pail to milk the cows with, as well as a heater, which I assumed I would soon need. I tested out the use of the bucket, and it looked like this. Questionable activity. I then promptly went and did this to a cow, and found out it was too young. Also questionable activity. Morals completely intact, I headed to the coop to put the heater in it for the birds to be warm this winter. Then I made a chance to leave this pail in by the barn. I headed to the mines to get copper for the day's quest, and ended up scoring the Monster Slayer goal for bug eradication. It was too late that day to check the reward, so I went home, with a little extra fiber from the cave as well, which I made grass starters out of. I've been told about a strat with lightning rods and grass, so I tried it by the coop and fenced it in. New fence in place, it seemed there was now a better place for the mail machines to sit for what would be a very, very long time. I went home to get some sleep, but had some trouble with that. But at least I made good money. Bok choy seemed to have sold really well. When I woke, I added more fencing to the coop, threw down more grass, and saved some for the cows, who I then also built a fence for. Once the fence was built, I let him out to watch him eat grass for the first time. Too cute. I did the daily farm chores and found myself harvesting eggplants for the first time. I sold everything from the mine strip and today's yield, except an eggplant and the geodes, and headed to town. I stopped by Pierre's to buy a lot of bok choy based on what I saw from last night's invoice. Pockets laden now with bok choy seeds, I headed to Clint's, showing him the ores for the quest, cracked the geodes, I donated one new mineral to the museum next door, then headed home to replant. After planting all the bok choy I could, I crafted a recycling machine to place by the fishing chest. I headed back into town because I forgot to turn in the eggplant and accepted a day quest about catching two chub. I turned in the eggplant to the fall crops bundle and headed back home again to smelt six copper, which I wanted to use to craft cheese press, considering multiple cheeses were in the artisan bundle. That night, I noticed my money was good. And right now, I'm just noticing how juicy melon jelly is. On day 64, a new foraging season began. Linus sent us a letter letting us know blackberry season had begun and that we could find them on bushes. He, however, had lost his basket and needed us to find it for him. I accepted that quest, looking forward to clicking on bushes for a week or so. I eventually left the farm to see what I could find and ended up chopping trees and fishing for a few chub for the quest. After catching them both, I headed down to Willie to complete the quest and accidentally sold everything, including the chub, first. Fortunately, we somehow got away with this, getting paid for two chub twice. That's good business right there. Today I also noticed the issue with the crab pot collection and added bait to it before leaving, feeling a bit dumb. I then headed over to the big quest board where I took another fishing depop quest, this time in the ocean. I was quietly hoping this would convince me to actually level my fishing skills so I could catch it up to everything else. I kept giving all these blackberries I was finding to everyone I encountered with mixed results. I walked to the adventurers guild whilst giving out gifts, hoping to receive a gift myself as we had slain a certain specific number of bugs. I was genuinely appalled by the reward. Insect head? Level four sword. Not very pleasant to wield. Yeah, that's pretty damn strange. Hey, would you like an insect head? Not gonna use that. I then glanced at the goals board to learn a star meant we'd done it. Stardew Valley seemed to have a whole lot of stars in it. I headed to the mines where we'd recently gotten a star drop, struggled a good bit to get gold, and ate the mail order pizza we'd gotten from Shane. I made it home that night, barely, and got some decent sleep. Though I imagine I woke up at least once that night due to the pizza. On day 65, we received some very startling news. There was a Stardew Valley fair in a week, and I was supposed to present in it. So after actually accidentally eating an egg and throwing a tepper on a mahogany tree, I got to work on making sure I could make things to present in this fair. I started by making this cheese press I'd mentioned before, hoping to make our first cheeses as soon as the cows were old enough. The comments had lobbed me a pretty solid hint that I could get refined quartz now that I had a recycling machine, and I instantly realized things like broken glasses and broken CDs must be the source. Broken glasses indeed provided some quartz, and I was sure I had found the only source of refined quartz. Yet I was still missing the more simple option. Still, this enabled me to make quality sprinklers. So I harvested, sold, and stored things, including the amaranth that Marnie was asking for. Excited about refined quartz, but knowing it could wait, I headed to Marnie's to drop off her request. I had noticed something in her bedroom, and after giving her the amaranth in question, I had the capacity to enter it. I found some rather incriminating evidence in here that I immediately ran away with. Grabbing more and more blackberries when I saw them, I started looking around for Lewis, but didn't find him. I returned to plant a lot more bok choy, then took to focusing on recycling. I began to place the torches made from trash on the ground here, and avidly fished for all trash types in this small lake. Once I'd caught a sufficient amount of 
quartz making garbage, I headed over to the beach to start working on the ocean fishing quest I had taken, collecting shrimp and rebaiting the newly working crab pot. I gave more gifts on the way home that night and made decent money on the day's harvest. Day 66 started off with some selling, some good old classic gathering, and discovering that our cows could now be milked. I got milk from each of them, but it wasn't large, so it wouldn't work for the animal bundle. I went ahead and put all four of them in the cheese press I'd preemptively made, hoping to get cheese by the end of the day. I noticed as well that the mahogany tapper just produced sap, which I admit was a bit underwhelming. The jelly production was going swimmingly, as I simply just kept queuing more fruit from the summer yield that I had saved, mostly being blueberries. But I was saving a lot of blackberries for this as well. After selling and harvesting more, I was left with this sunflower, which was needed in the dye bundle. As I left, I caught a quartz making trash and queued it for production. Then I left to go find Lewis and return his shorts, and I grabbed this ghost slaying quest on the way. I handed Lewis the shorts, giving him a chance to lie, and then demand I tell no one what happened here. After doing that questionable deed, I brought the sunflower to the dye bundle, and headed back to the farm. The animal products were ready, and so we got our first look at cheese. I sold most of it, but saved one for the artisan bundle, which I took it to, as well as bringing the shrimp to the crab pot bundle, buying the 10,000 G bundle, and bringing the five star gold corn to the quality crops bundle. Each of those last three completed bundles, giving three crab pots, a lightning rod, and a preserves jar, respectively. I headed back home with all the loot, expanding our preserving station to seven strong, and heading to the mines to slaughter a ghost for the quest. One dead ghost later, I went home for sleep and made this much money. I started off day 67 harvesting and replanting bok choy, then taking care of both sets of animals. This animal routine would become a consistent pattern of behavior for nearly every morning. I collected a forgotten reward for the mayor's shorts quest while walking to the wizard's tower, and of course, picking blackberries. After speaking to Rasmodius the wizard and acquiring the cash, I headed to Emily's to give her a sunflower, since one was by her picture in the dye bundle. But instead, I got a private show. What is happening? I gave Jody next door a trout soup for her birthday, then had some for myself to go ocean fishing with. I ended up scoring a fair bit from this trip, including sea cucumbers, coal, a glass shards artifact, a super cucumber, and some trash, which now mattered. I had effectively balanced the biome with this and collected my money for doing so. I headed home to sell my bounty, but chose to save the super cucumber and the iridium quality sea cucumber I had caught. By this point, I had a small chest of special stuff, which would change and expand throughout the playthrough as I learned more about what was truly rare. I headed off to sleep, having sweet gamer dreams of level 7 farming and level 5 fishing, the latter of which gave us a choice. Fisher seemed like the obvious choice of the two here, and so I slept comfortably on my new pile of money. Day 68 was very much a wood day. I got a letter from Jody about how to make fried calamari, then began doing the usual farm routine. Today in particular, I harvested my first yam, which after the farm business had been addressed, I took to the fall crops bundle. I planted this tree by Robin to see if it would grow, as I was on my way to check on another farm upgrade price from her. But this time, it was a house upgrade. I could apparently upgrade my house for 10,000 G and 450 pieces of wood, but I very much didn't have that wood. My gifts were not enough to lower the wood price, so I went looking for as much wood as I could find. By the end of the day, I sold the others and goods and replanted what I could, and I slept comfortably on my pile of wood. It was a nice day today, so I grabbed this amethyst for future plans and harvested lots of bok choy, and of course eggs and milk. I went to town where I found a daily quest for Haley, which I accepted before managing to find Abigail, the reason I'd grabbed the amethyst. It was her birthday after all, and I knew she loved these, though I was worried she might eat it. I went to Robins with the pile of wood gathered yesterday and ordered the new house upgrade, genuinely curious what would happen. On my way home, my subconscious brain put in some work. Oh, that was the basket. I just saw the basket. Did you guys see that? I still love that I saw that after it was off screen. The human brain is crazy. I started gathering up my gold bars for a new gold tool, but I only had three and enough ore for one more. So I went back to the mine to get enough gold for exactly one more, then came back home and started its melting. I sold some stuff, then went to grab the mysterious basket from the road. After returning, I decided to get cheeky. I genuinely don't remember if I figured this out or if the comments help with this, but I noticed a silo could only hold so much, but a chest could hold so much more. I decided to try withdrawing hay from the silo and storing it in the chest next to it, but the troughs for both animals were full. I'd have to try this again later. The gold didn't smelt in time to take to Clint, so I went to the museum to drop off the glass shards. Then I started looking in the collections tab at all the things I was missing. I stopped by the beach before heading home to grab a frozen tear per Haley's day quest. I tried to get to some of my boxes, but a good boy caused another issue. So I moved the chests outside. I went to bring Haley the tear, but the night had grown late enough and the door was locked. I at least got more cash from good old bok choy. Today, Robin was bonking the same spot on my house with a hammer. Needless to say, I imagine I woke up a little early. There was a good harvest and I shared it with Robin, and I even sold all my void essence from spelunking for some quick cash. I saved all the fruit as per usual, though. More perishable food came through the mail. <laughs> more perishable... <laughs>
<laughs> More perishable food. <laughs> this time it was a cake, though, from Mom. Our harvest included these fairy roses, which I decided were best given to people who would like them. I went to give a couple to Emily and Haley and stumbled into a cutscene about cleaning the couch. I came up with what was apparently a great solution. Gave them both roses and Haley a tear and went on my way. Not before Haley started being Haley, though. Penny and Alex also liked the roses, and I went on a gift-giving spree to the whole town, searching for Linus the whole time to give him his basket. I even tried to give this lady a gift, but it simply wouldn't work. After giving everyone I could find gifts, I found Linus and ended up with a very strange cutscene from him. Uh, into your tent, okay. Oh. There we go. See this? It's a special kind of fish bait that I make. Awesome. Okay. One super special bit of knowledge later, I headed home, running into Abigail, and answering a question about her hair. Very incorrectly, apparently. I headed home, confused how my wide generosity would end with meanness, handled the day's remaining farm things, and went to sleep. On day 71, I got some surprising news. After the farm's usual chores, during which I harvested the first pumpkins of the playthrough, we got a letter in the mail. It stated that the Stardew Valley Fair was tomorrow? How had time gone by this quickly? I picked out nine items, hoping they would help me do well at whatever it was I was was supposed to be doing at this fair, and then cleared some grass for hay. I headed to town to do some community centering, and stopped by Pierre's to sell some harvest directly to get enough cash to reach 25,000 G. I took this hard change over to the town's decaying center, and bought the very expensive 25,000 G bundle in the vault set. We received this fascinating gift of a crystallarium, and completed further with this the entire room. We earned another star, the second of six, towards full completion of the center, and I was genuinely so happy about it. I didn't forget to drop off the pumpkin of the fall crops bundle before leaving, finishing that bundle and earning a bee house. I took the few nickels I still had to rub together and bought more bok choy to grow and headed home to replant. I also grabbed our jelly and placed down our rewards. I attempted to put refined quartz into the crystallarium, which sadly didn't work. My brain was slowly turning over the predicament here though, as I did finally have the premonition to put regular quartz in the machine instead. I added jelly to the box for the fair, knowing this was too many items, but hoping I could make a good decision on the next day. I did a brief mind trip before heading to bed, dreaming of a vision of a bunch of Junimos dancing around a bus. On the morning of the fair, I awoke in a newly upgraded house, complete with a new room and a kitchen with cooking capacity and a fridge. I moved some things around, headed outside, and began to prep for the fair. During the usual tasks, I got our first large milk, which would be useful in the animal bundle. I also used an egg to test cooking, netting us a fried egg. The kitchen worked. I started heading towards the fair and saw Pam walking to the bus. I learned by speaking to her that she was the bus driver and that soon we'd be able to go somewhere with it. Then I headed into the fair. I discovered a much larger event than I expected, complete with its own mini games and currency called Star Tokens. I tried my hand at one of those mini games, netting a cool two tokens. Lewis directed us to an empty grange, which, after speaking to a few locals and a few tourists, I placed nine items of choice in. I continued talking to everyone I saw, taking in the sights, encountering the very oracle from the TV who read our personal fortune, being rather ominous about it, and I eventually stumbled into a minigame about fishing with a pay-to-play scheme, but I earned considerably more star tokens from playing it. I also found one about slingshots, which was decent, but the payout was far less than the fishing one. I decided not to continue with this as the price to play was the same as the fishing game, with less payout. I went to the shop, realizing this was where to spend the star tokens, and within it were important items, a rare crow and a star drop. There was also a glowstone ring, which piqued my interest. I decided I needed to earn a lot of star tokens. I asked Lewis at this time to evaluate the Granges, considering I thought maybe I could score some tokens from possibly winning. Crushing the competition with a 96 out of what, I'm not sure, we earned 1,000 star tokens with which to enable our success. I talked to the sore losers who were agreeable, then tried spinning this wheel. I won, but felt it wasn't reliable, so I stepped away and went back to fishing. Once I had reached 2,000, I went to secure the star drop, easily being the most important purchase of the set. I continued this loop until having enough to purchase the rare crow as well, then decided to try an all or nothing with the remaining tokens to speed up getting the ring. That didn't work. I went back to fishing for a while until then trying the wheel a few more times to save me some time, which all in all, it did. Securing the wing, <laughs> securing the ring, the win, and of course, a saucy star drop, I talked to everyone I could find before leaving the fair for good. Leaving the fair put us at our doorstep at 10 p.m., so I left to go to the comm center to drop things off, but encountered an Abigail cutscene. After being an influence on somebody else's daughter, I went to leave perishable food in an abandoned building. What a game this is. On the way, I made this thing, which apparently makes slime eggs. What a game this is. Anyway, about that abandoned food, specifically, I placed a large milk in the animal bundle, and I was surprised to notice the fried egg 
was in the chef's bundle. That one was an accident, but I'm taking credit for it anyway. I placed down the slime egg press back at home, allocating a hundred slime to cue the production of one such slime egg. I sold the things I didn't deem special that were used in the Grange, and saved the special ones. And this is how much money I made. After that shockingly long day, it was time to clean up. Literally. I started the day with a letter from Emily teaching us how to make a red plate, then promptly took a large quest from Linus about fishing trash out of our town's waters. This seemed great because I would love to process that trash into quartz. I had also been nudged in the comments to try refining quartz into refined quartz. Feeling a little dumb, I tossed it into the furnace to learn I could have just done this, this whole time. Accepting this new reality I was now in, I began to fish for trash in my small puddle, wondering if I could just farm the trash here. After spamming the exact same spot 20 times, the collection portion of the quest was complete. I started heading over to where the trash bin was, but got caught in another Abigail cutscene. Oh, oh, really? That's beautiful. That is beautiful. And much to my surprise, we joined in. Yes. Yes. I ended up loving it so much, I looped it later and played along with my violin. After that lovely jam session, I headed to the train station and put all the trash in the bin, hoping it would complete the quest. Then I took it all back out, planning to keep it to process. The quest knew better though, and didn't let me finish the quest without leaving the trash in the bin, which immediately became unopenable as soon as I closed it with all 20 trashes in it. My plans had been foiled again, but at least the quest itself was complete. Upon completing, two achievements popped at once. I'm an achievement hunter, so this scratched a forbidden itch. One for getting hearts with people, and one for doing quests for people. Only then did I head home and do the usual farm chores, collecting our first normally produced refined quartz, and grabbing this new slime egg and storing it for later. Linus had also requested a frozen tear, which I brought him as well. I kept making refined quartz this new way, cleared more grass for hay, and smelted my little heart out until it was time for sleep. Once again, dreaming of money. I was starting to feel like a golden boy with all these good deeds. So why not get a golden boy a new golden toy? My suspicions were confirmed when I received the best neighbor award in the mail, earning 500g. I was clearly a golden boy now. Linus sent us a recipe for fiber seeds, and I went on to tend to the farm leaving soon to give Marnie a mediocre birthday present. I also opened a jar for Haley. A few gifts later, I was in Pierre's, selling things to reach 10k gold. Then I made the golden purchase in question, donated a new mineral to the museum, and tried giving one as a gift, which flopped hard. I did some more farm clearing that day, except things that required an axe, considering I temporarily now didn't have one of those. This is how much money I made. The third quarter was ending today, beginning our home stretch of these 100 days. What better to do than to try out a whole new location? Day 75 began with Marnie at our doorstep, asking for something. She wanted, oddly enough, a cave carrot to teach her new goat tricks with. Probably one of the odder starts to a stardew day, but that's what happened. Among the farm chores, I discovered our first honey from the bee house and sold even more bok choy. We also got a few letters, one from Marnie with a new recipe and one from Caroline asking for a pumpkin in typical quest form. I forgot I had these pumpkins planted already, so thinking I had sold them all already, I went to buy one more pumpkin seed. While there, I purchased this apricot sapling, hoping I could start the fruit tree train soon. I also saw this quest from Sebastian, which I accepted. Since it had asked for ocean fish, I took to the beach, but after several fish, I lost interest in doing even more fishing, so I headed back home. I had fished some iridium quality fish, and was beginning to store iridium quality things for later. I planted the pumpkin seed, but stored the apricot sapling for later, worried winter would freeze it to death. Winter was coming, after all, and I had no idea what that would mean. But I did say whole new location was explored today. I bought our first ticket to a new place at the bus stop. It turned out to be this sprawling desert hotspot. Sorry about that one. Complete with a desert trader with absolutely wild wares and a camel, coconuts, and palm trees, cacti, and cactus fruit, and a new shop run by someone named Sandy. She had an interesting assortment of new seeds and a really weird guy in the back called a bouncer. Suspicious. Very suspicious. Tucked away in the northwest of what was called Calico Desert was a small, unassuming cave. Upon entering, however, I discovered a skull door, which was openable via the skull key. I had found the key's true use. Finally, I was immediately blasted with shockingly hard-hitting and undoubtedly freaky-looking creatures, and I really tried to survive the first level. After consuming a lot of food and still not making much headway, this creepy smoke appeared, which always meant the flying creatures were going to arrive in droves, in the mines that had been bugs and bats. Here, it was whatever these things are. I went back out the ladder without hesitation, and re-entered, only to see a completely different level 1. This was a randomly generated mines, and I sure didn't see an elevator anywhere. I made it to a second level, with mummies which didn't actually die and departed upon reaching level 3. We simply were not ready, but that was exciting and was looking forward to figuring this new beast out. And this new beast had a name. 
Skull Cavern. I dropped off the honey I'd found what seemed like days ago on the farm to the artisan bundle, headed back to that very farm, forgot about the time, and passed out smelting new bars. We hit level 8 farming, snagging the recipes for the keg and the oil maker. Woo! What a day. The journey was now three-fourths complete, but with a new location just being opened, it felt like a new game. In fact, that very morning, a mysterious man by the name of Mr. Chi sent us a letter, throwing down a challenge for us to get to level 25 in the Skull Cavern. So after the day's farm chores, I headed to the bus stop to buy a ticket. I found out the hard way I could only do this when Pam was there, so I started heading to town. But I ran straight into Pam, so I turned around and waited. After she arrived officially, I bought a ticket and went to Calico Desert once again. Upon arriving, I took another glance at this desert trader who had desert totems as well as this extremely expensive recipe for learning how to craft them. I also noticed a very interesting seasonal seed conversion mechanic she had. In one of the mysterious chi, I went to check the Bowser, but learned absolutely nothing. So I headed to the cavern hoping to get some answers, or at least some loot. I found some bugs, which I assumed would be the easiest enemy. Turns out they're quite literally impervious to damage. So I went and picked on this slime, which became a bunch of small slimes, and then quickly destroyed me. Ouch. Turns out if you lose in the caverns, you don't get rescued by Linus. You go to get emergency surgery, which is expensive, and you still lose items. Ouch. I didn't know if the item recovery service would work for the caverns, but as I started walking to the Adventurers Guild, I really hoped so, because otherwise, I no longer had a weapon. I encountered a funny Linus cutscene on the way, but I can't say I was particularly in the mood at the time. I was partially relieved to find the service worked, but had to pick between something I wanted and something I needed. Still, at least we weren't swordless. I took the rest of the day to relax and recover from my wounds, picking up the golden axe from Clint, giving Caroline her pumpkin, and gathering, selling, and smelting things on the farm. Lastly, I looked at the social tab to see how things were. And, well, this is how things were. Not too shabby. That morning, our prized obsidian edge was right back in our hands, and so was our new golden axe, which I used to clear the wood stuff from the farm I wasn't able to clear before. After that, in the usual suspects of the farm, I made this life elixir, and got a notification about a train coming through the valley. So I went to get whatever fell. Once the train had left, I decided this place could use some clearing as well, and when I'd had enough of that, I brought Robin a sunflower for her birthday. While there, I started looking at some farm upgrades. The option existed to take an existing barn or coop and upgrade it to a big barn or big coop, allowing it to accommodate new livestock species. I put that in my mind as our next use of resources. While I was there, I gave Mara an amethyst, and finally got the rights to enter her room. I had been wondering what this weird little machine was, and my curiosity was not quenched by this underwhelming answer. I brought my hoe, the tool, to Clint to order the copper upgrade for it, then gave this amethyst to Leia. I mentioned this one because it was a surprise. Leia didn't like the pretty rock. I liked that the developer had given different people different personalities in this way, and decided to explore that more in the future. So, my main objective at this point, I was looking at duck feathers in the dye bundle, truffle oil in the artisan bundle, and wine in the enchanter's bundle. This meant I needed to get a big coop, an oil maker, and a keg, respectively. In that vein, I started clearing this train station for wood, and also the mountain lake area for even more wood. I took this daily quest from the wizard for a mushroom, and brought him one from my my stores, choosing to clear this area out as well afterwards. North of the tower here, I bumped into this big log, and remember the comments had been hinting about something north of the wizard tower. I eagerly chopped this down and followed a new pathway westward. We had discovered another new place, the Secret Woods. This gorgeous place provided us with a bump in hardwood, as well as some slimes, a new lake for fishing, and a new mystery to solve. But I had so little time to explore this that night, and went home, dreaming of level 8 foraging type awesomeness. The world was opening up to us, with two new areas discovered in three days time. I decided after today's harvest, yield, and production to go back to the secret woods to see what else there was to know. After gathering the hardwood for these more obvious four stumps, I began to wonder if I could get through these trees to the other two stumps. After some struggling, I found a way in, and chopped the remaining two stumps. I then found another way out, but got lost in the trees on my first try of using it terrifying. I also tried to fish in this lake, which gave me a wall decoration? I decided that was enough secrety business for one day, and headed back out to chop some not-so-secret trees. After much wood acquisition, I returned to the farm to nab all the things that had been processed, and sell it for the good good money. I also made this oil maker, which I can proudly say, I never figured out how to use. At least... Not in my first 100 days. I also made two kegs, which I can proudly say I did indeed figure out how to use. Throwing some spice berries in to become whatever they would become, I quickly learned my farm would now forever have this sound on it. Some spice berries. Yeah, that's kind of strange of a sound that you just made there. You're gonna be doing that? We're no longer using, because fall is almost over. 
It's just going to keep doing that, isn't it? I also picked up the sprinklers that wouldn't be watering the persistent corn as I didn't intend to replant before winter. And I was assuming, considering there wasn't a winter crops bundle, that we would not be growing anything during winter. I took my first couple of sad attempts at the oil maker, being mushrooms and oak resin, the former of which being on a hunch that truffle oil comes from truffles, which are mushrooms. But neither worked. I slept proud I'd found new paths and secret places, and that I had at least made the kegs work properly. I think? After day 79's harvest and yield, I headed to Robin's, hoping to use all this new wood. But she wasn't in. I decided to head to Pierre's instead, and found Robin along the way. I sold some stuff to Pierre, and the place just so happened to be packed. So I spoke to everybody there, grabbed this quest for Alex, and then talked to even more people on the way to Clint's. Sam in particular had something rather interesting to say. Especially after I run through the haunted maze this weekend. Oh, the what? After hearing this wonderful news and or hint, I stopped in to Clint's to order the steel hoe. This would be the only time I would let him steal my hoe, as I was already getting along with Emily rather well. Hold on, let me just... What? I'm getting cancelled? No, 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 it was just a joke, I didn't... I wandered over to the big quest board and chose a quest from Gunther about getting a hundred bone shards, because I was pretty sure I already had a bunch of those already. If only I had known the truth. This quest was about to bone me. Oh, come on! I headed home after my poor choice, giving gifts along the way, and collected some of our processed goods, as well as placing our new wall decoration on the wall of my house. This came out of a lake. I went to the beach that night before sleep to try to snag an anchovy per Alex's request and had this lovely run around where I tried to get to these bubbles for better fishing. Wasn't that lovely? I stopped by the saloon to give everybody blackberries before ending the day. At this point, I feel like I'm allowed to say chores. It's day 80, yeah? Yeah, they're chores. Very pleasant and aesthetic chores, but they're farm chores. I did them. I enjoyed them. Yeah. Also, Gus sent this letter teaching us how to make a salmon dinner, which I wish I'd known back when I had all that salmon. I sold some things, but not the pumpkins, because Halloween, uh, Spirit's Eve festival was close at hand, and I thought I might need them for that. I did, however, make this new quality sprinkler, and then headed to Robbins to order the big coop upgrade. I may have woken on the wrong side of the bed this morning, but I was gonna be productive anyway. I handed Alex what was now a day-old fish, which I'm sure is the exact condition he wanted his fish to be in, and received my well-earned reward. Yum. Day-old fish. I headed to the mine, stopping first to fish in the mountain lake, netting more fish, and this lost book. How is this still a book? It came out of the water! Moving into the mines, I went to slay many skeletons, and after exterminating so many that I quite literally hit the slayer goal, I left to go check on what that would mean. The answer to that question was that this man, who had been so thoughtful as to give me an insect head as a weapon before, decided to give me a skeleton mask. I really didn't want to know where this came from. I headed back into the mines, wanting to confirm a hunch that this mask would make the skeletons not recognize me as an enemy, effectively making me immune. And, no, it doesn't do that at all. It's just a mask. As I slew more of the things I was wearing a face of on my face, I thought to myself that at least I had a Halloween costume come to- uh, uh, Spirit's Eve costume. After much more of this tomfoolery, I headed home, attempted to grab processed stuff to sell, but my inventory was full, and it was too late. But that night, amidst my gamer dreams, the secrets of the Mega Bombs crafting entered my brain. It was day 81 when I realized why choosing the Bone Quest was a mistake. After the farm chores, I headed straight to Clint's to steal back our new steel hoe, process some geodes, and order the steel trash can upgrade. I added this new mineral to the museum and added 67 bones to Gunther's counter for the quest. But when I looked at the quest, I realized I had to gather 100 bones in the time allotted. And I had only gathered 27 so far. I suddenly had a bone to pick with this quest. I got in a cave carrot on my previous bone picking, and I brought it to Marnie, who had been requesting just such a thing. I gave some pretty rocks to people, with mixed results, and headed back to the mines to prune more skeletons. When my inventory was full of bones-based boons, I brought the bone-based boons back before this boy. Say that three times fast. I sold this gentleman the calcium constructed collateral, and headed back to do more of the same. I did that very thing until the wee sleep times. Upon waking from my bombastic bone-beating spree, I got this letter next morning from Lewis about winter's approach, as well as this Spirit's Eve thing happening tomorrow. I started the morning chores thinking on this, and I discovered the coop had been upgraded. I was pretty sure this meant we could get docks, but first I greedily stared at my 106 iron ore I had, thanks to my skeleton slaying charades. It was a surprise I still had this much because I had been fervently smelting this whole playthrough. I also received a letter from Robin, speaking of that coop upgrade, mentioning it contained an incubator. I decided that had to be this thing because it was the only thing I didn't know what it was. Proud of my new farm building, I decided to go get the new things we could put in it. Ducks. Four of them. 
which I then pet reassuringly before selling the yield and stuff from the mining trips. When I was sure there was no birthday on this day, I dove back into the mines to do the exact same thing again. You starting to see why I said this was a mistake? After more man hours in the mines, I had enough to reach 100 delivered, so I brought the bones to Gunther, but I hadn't gathered enough, so I had to go gather more to complete the quest, despite Gunther now having 100 bones. A mistake, I tell you. I did this until sleep time once again. Today was the day of the Spirits Eve Festival, and oh boy, did I want nothing to do with skeletons. We reached the part of the season where I began to store things because I wasn't really sure what I would need later on. I collected, harvested, and processed everything I could before heading back to the mines once again to boop some skeletons on the nose hole. The quest finally popped when I had now gathered enough bones, and I collected my reward, feeling downright exhausted. I went home, looking on the bright side, because I now had so much iron, and got straight to smelting. I did this until I got a notification late in the day about an event starting, and I grabbed a few things just in case I would need them for the event. I wandered in, taking in the scenery, and immediately approaching this limited shop. It had a few nifty things in it, most importantly, a rare crow, which this time I could afford. To my absolute amazement, utter shock, and a little bit of bitterness in there, I saw skeletons at the event. I talked to everyone at the event, including those onlooking the skeletons, reading an interesting remark from Clint. Lewis mentioned a strange maze that Rasmodius had set up, so I jumped in to see what might be at the end, if there was one. A few different villagers were either lost or scared, but when I got deeper into the maze, Alex and I both saw a chest. Challenge accepted. After finding a secret passage here through the shrubs, which was an absolute cakewalk after finding the ones in the secret woods, I followed the logical path all the way to this lovely chest. In it was contained a golden pumpkin. One golden pumpkin richer, I headed all the way out the way I came and decided to buy the jack o lantern recipe and a single gravestone from Pierre's shop, before concluding that must be the end of the event and heading home. At home, the fancy pumpkin's description was a massive implication that I was supposed to sell it, but I just couldn't bring myself to do it. I decided to save it with my special stash, put down a new jack o lantern and gravestone, and called it a night, picking up equipment items to sell to Marlon in the morning. That night, we earned level 8 combat. I can't say I was surprised, but the slime incubator recipe wasn't expected for sure. The final day of fall was upon me, and so were the comments telling me eagerly to start watching the TV every morning. Apparently two shows, this being one of them, would teach us very important information. The Queen of Sauce would literally give us new cooking recipes, like artichoke dip for example. It was day 84 and I still had so much to learn. Gunther sent this letter teaching us something else new in exchange for the hard labor we put in. The bone mill. He mentions in the letter that we can make stuff from bones with these. He also said, To think each fragment belonged to a living, breathing body from the past. If only you knew, Gunther. If only you knew. I checked out my two new crafting recipes and immediately made four new bones mills, which in hindsight was probably three too many, considering I wasn't planning on getting any more bones anytime soon. I tried to convert bone-based loot using them, but that didn't work. It seemed bone fragments were the only option, and I had just spent all the ones I had on crafting the mills, so I just left them to do nothing at all while I did the farm things, including taking care of our new baby ducks. After those things, I headed to Robin's to inquire about the big barn, and learned about the existence of the deluxe tier, seeing this deluxe coop upgrade option. I was short on wood and funds to be able to make either of them, but the deluxe coop apparently had an auto-feed system, which was rather exciting. I wanted to give the local angsty boy in town something rebellious, so I thought he might like... Can I gift you a bomb? Oh my god, run! Oh my god! <laughs> it said gift! I decided to leave the townspeople alone for a while after that, and just started chopping wood for more farm construction. Except Marlin, who I sold these extra pieces of equipment to. I sold some of my product to Pierre directly, getting enough money for the big barn, but was unable to get the wood in time for Robin to start that day. I decided to get some hardwood as well on my tree cutting spree, but stopped by this cart before going into the secret woods. She had an oddly large number of things we still needed for the community center, and I happily obliged purchasing the sandfish, poppy, sturgeon, and even a rare crow. I almost bought the snow yam, but I figured that would be plentiful starting tomorrow. Then I did the secret woods, as planned, gave Abigail something that was actually food that she wanted to eat, and returned to the farm to put down our half-complete collection of rare crows. Then to finish off fall, I headed to the community center one more time, dropping off the poppy to the chef's bundle, the sandfish to the specialty fish bundle, and the sturgeon to the river fishing bundle. I received a dressed spinner for completing the river bundle. This was a piece of fishing tackle that I assumed I could put on my fishing rod, but it didn't work. And I once again assumed, like long ago with the bait, that I needed a better fishing rod to be able to use it. I went home, chopping more wood along the way, sold the last of our fall production, and went to sleep, wondering what in the world winter was going to look like. Winter did not disappoint, with what I must say was the best soundtrack for a season in the whole game, and... The snow sounds are delightful. Delightful indeed. 
The music and sounds coupled with this beautiful exterior, I could not have been more pleased. The other educational television program, Living Off the Land, advised us to do literally all of the other things besides farming during this season, and that made plenty of sense to me. The two kegs had finally made something, so that was a good start. They had produced wine. Spiceberry wine, in fact. I assumed going forward that putting anything in the keg would make a wine out of it. And this was half right. I'll go ahead and tell you that it was true for fruits specifically. Speaking of fruits, our jack-o'-lantern had already rotted, and I wasn't able to recycle it, so I sold it. I paid the price for this later. I made a new life elixir out of these mushrooms, and went to do the daily farm tasks. In the coop this time, I noticed the heater was pulsing, so I assumed it was working properly. I was, however, making one horrible mistake. I didn't notice it now. My gamer senses didn't tingle as they should have. I instead went to Marnie's to buy a heater for the barn, but she wasn't home, so I fished in the river nearby. And wow was there a surprisingly tough fish this season. It did a little spark. <gasps> uh, mom! Uh, oh. Lingcod. I managed to snag a second one of those, then headed to town, where I believe I immediately paid the price for selling the rotten pumpkin. I can't be sure, but Caroline and Jody started talking weirdly about my sap, one saying Pierre took credit for it, and another saying it smelled horrible. I stormed into Pierre's, wanting to demand answers before remembering I don't get to talk in this game. Incapable of standing up for myself, I checked the big quest board and took on a quest from Robin about gathering hardwood, thinking I already had plenty of hardwood. Clearly, I hadn't learned my lesson, for I now had to gather and deliver 80 hardwood. I consoled myself in that it wasn't so bad because I could only get 12 a day and they weren't long trips. Perhaps I could even make a good hardwood gathering habit. I stopped by Clint's to grab the steel trash can and ordered the copper watering can on the way out the door. I had no idea how it would help and I still didn't even know how the hoe had helped, but I assumed it would somehow. I went to Willie's to sell all the fish, making sure none of them were in any bundles, and purchased a new fishing rod I had suspected existed, the iridium rod. This could indeed accommodate both bait and tackle. I still didn't know how bait helped, but each piece of tackle had its individual perk in its description. Our dressed spinner, for example, increases the bite rate when fishing. Having looked at the bundles, I noticed we needed tuna. I was hoping to fish one out now that it was a new season, so I tried out the new rod, and I caught one rather quickly, as well as a bunch more fish that weren't in bundles. Then I went to the community center to drop the tuna off in the ocean fishing bundle, completing it and scoring some beach totems. I hadn't used any totems yet by this point, but totems would apparently warp you around to specific locations on the map. A beach totem, for example, would warp you to the beach, presumably. I added one of the wines we had made to the Enchanter's Bundle, went home, and foraged a new flower on the way called a crocus. I crammed in a secret woods trip late at night, remembering Robin's quest, and that I would need to stay on top of this to get enough wood in time. Then I headed back home for sleep, earning level 6 fishing in our peak efficiency gamer sleep, teaching us how to make two new pieces of tackle. That trap bobber there actually came in super handy really soon. Speaking of fishing, the next day I got a couple of letters, the second of which was from Willie, challenging us to catch a squid. And I wasn't about to ignore a challenge. Winter was also a fantastic season for spotting these little worms in the ground. This time it was a rusty spur buried here. I went to the secret woods, grabbed more hardwood, and fished, getting another of the same wall decoration. I also found that winter root could be hoed up this season. The worms were easy to see today, and I also scored this lost book. I went and chopped some trees and found this book. I went to check the calendar, wondering about birthdays and events, learning of two new ones, the Festival of Ice and the Night Market. This last one didn't happen in the first 100 days. I saw this quest as well, and grabbed it since I knew I'd be fishing. I sold what I could directly to Pierre, and noticed that I could talk to a lot of the ladies in short time by catching them in their workout. I also talked to Abigail, who wanted to share cocoa, which is adorable. I brought this crocus to the community center afterwards, wishing it was cocoa, and turned it into the winter foraging bundle. I only had the snow yam left for this whole room. I found four worms back to back, and the third one had a snow yam. I can't believe how many books I found today. I brought that snow yam to the same bundle, completing it and receiving winter seeds. This also completed the crafts room, netting us our third star, which felt amazing. Looking at the other bundles to see how far we could get to a fourth star soon, I decided the ocean would be efficient, hoping to search for a sea urchin for the dye bundle, and a squid for the quest from Willy. I decided to try those totems I mentioned for the first time. Whoa. Whoa. After that extremely strange display, I arrived on the scene and began fishing relentlessly. I caught so many fish, I ended up making a whole box just to store them in, and kept going until eventually... Oh, yes! I had spent so much time fishing, I had no chance of making it home. But that night, the Junos got to work preparing something new. I woke up that morning with a notification about a copper watering can, and a letter in my mail about Harvey having found me last night. I wonder how that happened. I stored those winter seeds from yesterday and headed towards town, running into this thing, and then it ran away. I found this ancient doll and followed that thing into town, but didn't see it anywhere. Despite the rather obvious indication of which way it went, I missed it. So I resolved to look for it later. We had a new quest, after all, to find the shadowy figure. I went to the secret woods to continue my work towards Robin's 
quest, then warped to the ocean to fish for Willie's herring. I found this sea urchin and fished the herring, which I gave him as well as the squid from last night. I also found this rusty cog while fishing. I took some of the things I'd dug and fished to the museum, and earned this strange bear statue. I also took this time to read the many new lost books in the museum, then left to collect the copper watering can, but immediately order the steel watering can. There wasn't much to water in winter, so this seemed like the right time. I dropped the sea urchin to the dye bundle, then went looking for a Linus, because it was his birthday. I didn't see him outside, and I had a hunch he might be trying to stay warm, so I checked the bathhouse. I gave the warm man his birthday gift, and this is how the socials were looking. I headed back to farm and realized I'd been forgetting about the animals, so I took care of them, but they weren't very happy with me. After placing my new bear statue and tending to the live animals, I headed to the saloon to give gifts, then returned home to sell and sleep soundly, securing level 7 fishing. The next morning, I was shocked by how beautiful the snow falling was. I grabbed a letter with a recipe, then chopped down the mahogany tree. I didn't immediately notice the tree gave 12 hardwood, but after checking the robin quest, I realized both that fact and another fact. I needed to plant more hardwood trees. A lot more. I grabbed all my hardwood so I could give it to Robin whenever I saw her next, and found out cows don't make milk if you don't feed them. But the dogs grew up, and now I had eight eggs. I saw one aptly named Duck Egg, as well as one large big white chicken egg for the collection tab, and queued four of the remaining six, hoping to see what duck eggs did. On my way to buy another heater from Marty for the barn, I found a prehistoric hand axe. I then got that heater and went to gather more hardwood because, you know, I gotta gather it in the time given. I had reached 58 out of 80 by this point though, the mahogany tree was a big unexpected boost. Upon returning home, I learned the duck eggs make duck mayonnaise. Yeah, that makes sense. I picked up the lightning rods to put them back down with grass in spring and found another doll in the ground. I wanted to go see Robin, give her the hardwood, and purchase the big barn upgrade all at once. So I went to Pierre to sell things to get the remaining money in hand. I didn't quite get the 12,000 G I needed though. Abigail talked about those dumb saps again and I brought this duck egg to the animal bundle. I then ran home to give this heater to the cows, but it did start pulsing like the one on the coop had, which concerned me. I later learned that I was making a horrible mistake. I decided to spend the rest of the night building farm 2.0, moving the smelting station, and setting up new sprinklers and chests. Sleeping was still required, so the trial and error farm setup continued into the next day. I messed up the scarecrow placements a few times. I still didn't know what their radius of effect was, so I went for the better safe than sorry approach. After moving the last of the farm, I planted the apricot sapling, because the comments insisted it wouldn't die. After that leave of faith, I placed some fencing and chopped down the last of the farm trees, and planted new trees, hoping to use these for all the lovely tree juices going forward. I queued up some bones I'd found and moved all the chests around for better access at relevant stations, as I began to call them. Finally, I took care of the animals and headed to the secret woods for the daily hardwood run before heading back home to sleep. It was becoming clear on day 90 that ducks wouldn't produce eggs every day, but approximately every other day. But they could also produce duck feathers? What wasn't so clear was how to keep the animals warm. The comments had informed me of my failings by this point, but I had recorded all the way through the first 100 days before they got the crucial info to me. But Editor Watson knew something important. The animals, it's safe to say, were not warm. No one is in winter when the door is wide open. The bones had made deluxe speed grow, and in the mail was a particularly sad letter. Clint was asking us to give Emily an amethyst, saying it was from him. I knew full well she loved these, and even the game knew what was about to happen with the quest it gave us. Clint's attempt! Oh no! Oh no, it was called an attempt. That sucks. Well, despite that, it was time to make a purchase. I found another book, and Alex talked smack on my way to Robin's. I noticed this interesting structure, but purchased the barn instead, leaving 80 hardwood with her before I left. I'd already gathered 70 by this point, so I was confident things would work out there soon. On my way out the door, a new cutscene happened. Robin basically invited Linus over to my farm, without really asking, and when I accepted, she said she'd build him a home on my property. I'm sure she would have charged me for that, and made me get all the resources too. But Linus politely declined, preferring his life among the wilds. I respected his wishes and gave him a flower to show it. I took one of those shiny new duck feathers to the dye bundle and realized only a red cabbage remained for this bundle. Look, I lost book. I donated the new artifacts, gave gifts to those there, and read more books. After the reading, I made four more mayo machines so I would never be behind on mayo production. And I anticipated needing four more cheese press for the next barn animal. I went gift giving, grabbed a quest along the way, and found Emily to give an amethyst. Clint's amethyst. Oh, my favorite stone. You're so sweet. Huh? It's from who? You got it at Clint's? Well, I don't care where you got it from. It's beautiful. Thank you. Smooch. <laughs> oh, no, dude. Oh, 
God! That went about how I expected. So I gave her one from me just to really seal the deal. I went to the Secret Woods to finish Raven's quest, which I probably did, and then went home to place the mail machines, two new cheese press, and slept the night away. Pierre sent us mixed messages next morning, stopping by to bully us into not shopping at Joja, but leaving a letter in the mail about finding love. Apparently, if I wanted to get a girlfriend, or boyfriend, I would need to buy a bouquet from him and give it to them. We got a lot of other messages too. Emily said she was hosting something called clothing therapy, Linus gave us some fried calamari, and Lewis let us know there was an event tomorrow. With the morning's info download complete, I took care of the animals, and by sheer dumb luck, I decided to close the animal building gates because I reckoned they weren't going to go outside in the snow, as there was no grass for them to eat. Editor Watson was terrified relieved. I was headed out to the secret woods out of habit by this point and saw this lady and her cart again. This time, however, she had this orange sapling and as I recall, this was a 25% discount from Pierre's price. I didn't buy it yet because I wanted to check after grabbing hardwood from the secret woods. I investigated my suspicions and found them confirmed. Indeed, the price of Pierre's was 4,000, 1,000 more. I saw Pierre a few things and gave him some calamari, which I'd learned he liked, but didn't buy that sapling from him. I did buy a bouquet though because there was something I wanted to try. First, I went back to the cart, bought the sapling at a better price and punted it back on the farm close to the apricot tree, but not too close. Look, a lost book. I still had a quest to get Willie a cactus fruit, so I took the bus over, snagged one, finding a few interesting things like this totem, and looking at this massively priced recipe again. I headed back to the valley, giving away mayo to people, you know, like normal people do, and ran up to Emily at work and gave her this bouquet. You want to get more serious? I feel the same way. Girlfriend. Oh, crazy. Now that was a weird experience, but I was down for it. I handed Willie the cactus in drive-by style, like most of my gifts were, completing that quest and heading to the mayor's place, where Emily had said this would happen. You're probably wondering, what is clothing therapy? You all have a unique style to share with the world. <laughs> oh, not bad. <laughs> He's gonna come out wearing the exact same thing. Oh, that's, that is cute. Oh, cute. <sighs> Watson, um, I couldn't do it. I don't want to break out of my shell. Oh, I, I guess I'm interrupting something here, aren't I? I understand. I'll leave now. Congrats, Watson. Uh. Mm. Poor Clint, man. I had seen it was Caroline's birthday today as well, and I gave her mayo, like a normal person. And yet somehow, she didn't like it. I fished some, then I headed up to see what bridge had been repaired, and found this new area called the quarry. The name seems self-explanatory, and I even found some iridium ore in this rock within it. But I learned the name by using this minecart, and finding out at the other end that it was now a minecart destination. I sold some stuff, including mayo, which is maybe a bit more normal, and got some decent sleep. Day 92 came with an event called the Festival of Ice. Hoping to get the farm stuff done before the event, I set to work, discovering this chicken statue buried in the ground. How? Just how? I harvested the new wine we'd made, looking at the new winter seeds growing. Did I mention I planted those after we got them? I planted those. I saw that cranberry wine with other variants of cranberries, like cranberry jelly and also just a cranberry, to see how the sale price changed. By that point, the event had begun, so I headed south to see what would be happening. There were igloos and villagers aplenty, all with interesting things to say. I spoke with this cart lady again, this time an igloo lady, and she was selling the same rare crow she'd already sold me. Sneaky, cart lady. I see what you're doing. I didn't purchase it and continued to talk to everybody. Linus even told me he made the igloos. But what this event came down to was ice fishing. And you guessed it, we had to catch as many fish as possible in a short amount of time. And I can proudly say we won, earning three pieces of fishing tackle and another hat I would never wear again. But at least I tried it on. I sold everything I'd queued and retired for the night. We're closing on 100 days, but I was still finding new things. Day 93 kicked off as most do, doing the daily farm chores. I noticed our barn was now a big barn. I moved the preserving jars around a bit for aesthetic and look, a lost book. And a lost book. I truly cannot believe how many of these things I found in winter. I headed over to donate that statue that had come from the ground to the museum, and of course I was rewarded with two statues. Real cute there, Stardew. I see you. I read even more books, coming across a particularly interesting one, speaking about five legendary fish across the valley, and it's changing seasons. One for each season, and one in the sewers. I thought it would be fun to explore the winter one, and it referenced a place called Cindersap Forest. I had no idea where that was, but when cross-referencing the map, I realized that was the place I'd just been ice fishing. It also showed me there was a character in Jody's house I hadn't met yet named Kent. Strange map. There was even another interesting book about marriage, which finally explained that old mariner out in the rain. I'd have to buy a pendant from him if I wanted to get married. Never mind, it's not the map. 
Strange Valley. I went to clear the quarry with thoughts about the glacier fish, our new winter hunt, in the back of my mind. After cutting a few trees, I noticed a strange mines-like entrance in the northwest of the quarry. I wandered in, and what I found needed no words. A ladder with a skull sign next to it. So I immediately went in. I assumed that skull meant danger, but what I hadn't realized was how literal it was. This cave was one long, single floor with literal magic skulls flying at you to mess you up real bad as you mind your way to an uncertain end. Skull sign. Got it. Making it to the far end of this strange cave, I found what looked like a reaper, but it wasn't real. Instead, it was a statue, holding a very real golden scythe. It must be better somehow, but I had no idea how or why. I left the same long way I came, giving a few gifts that day, and floundering with the oil maker again before heading off to sleep, wondering what I had just found. The next morning, I placed this statue down next to the chickens to keep them guessing, moved some of my tackle around, and headed to Marnie's to buy the new animals, because the big barn was done. I walked in right at 9am when the door unlocked, and immediately bought four goats from her hoping soon to make goat cheese. I also grabbed these shears for later, thinking I might need them when I got what I assumed would be the deluxe barn. Back at the farm, I pet our new baby goats and went to processing eggs and milk as usual. I headed to town, giving our girlfriend Emily an amethyst, and went to Robin's because it was Sebastian's birthday. I was hit back to back with two cutscenes. The first one incorporated her giving us these musical block recipes, which I never used, and the second was a strange conversation about bedposts and their aesthetic importance versus their lack of utility. After settling an argument about such things between husband and wife, which I'm sure wasn't intrusive at all, I gave them both gifts to smooth things over. In the end, I couldn't get to Sebastian because I didn't have permission to go in his room. Leaving what was a decidedly strange household, I went to clear the entire quarry for resources. Well, okay, just the trees in the quarry. What do I look like? That argument was exhausting. I headed home, gathered all, and sold some of my processed goods, and made two more cheese press for the barn. Then I went gift giving, and I got lucky because for a brief moment, Sebastian came outside, and I was able to give him a birthday present before he got lost in thought again. Broody, eh? I hear the ladies love that, Seba. I went into the mines to get some gold, then headed home again, putting those cheese press I for some reason carried into the mines with me down by the other presses. I checked on the fungus before sleep, making one life elixir as the day ended. On day 95, the TV told us we'd already caught the winter exclusive fish, the squid and the link cod. Yet, I knew better. After petting my 16 total livestock animals, and after a secret woods run, I decided to follow directions. Now this isn't something I normally do, but it's the 95th day, and I gotta keep you guessing. The lost book had said the glacier fish, winter super secret legendary fish could be found specifically at the southern tip of the arrowhead shaped island in Cindersat Forest. I reckon that meant to stand in exactly this spot right here. And this thing showed up. I failed at this several times, but felt proud I had at least figured out where to look. And I schemed to come back very soon to catch this. I wandered about foraging and wondering how I could nab this fish promptly. I headed home, chopped a few trees along the way. Look, a lost book. Look, a lost book. I made a few winter seeds from the forage and planted them, collected new jelly, and made some field snacks before heading to bed, dreaming about a particular fish. On day 96, I woke to a new achievement. We had reached a total earnings of 250,000 G, but I had many more things to do today. I received a letter from the wizard asking for void essence, but I had sold all our void essence for a quick buck 25 days ago. So, after collecting the resources, harvesting the farm, and converting the harvest to 50 seeds to replant, I headed to the mines to get exactly one void essence. I found this snowy on the way, allowing me to make 10 more seeds for later. I plunged straight down into the depths with the elevator, slew the first thing I saw for Void Essence and immediately left. I planted those 10 more seeds I mentioned, all the while with that glacier fish on my mind. I wanted to create a fence for the farm, and I unknowingly chose these fences, acquiring a new achievement for crafting 30 new items called Artisan. I had trouble understanding how this had happened, as I was sure I had made fences before. I decided it must have been a different flavor of fence, and didn't realize my error until the fences didn't combine with the original fences I'd placed. I had just made a considerable amount of what was called hardwood fences. Oops. I attempted to pick up the old fences to see how I could remedy the situation, but found quickly that I didn't actually get the fences back. Apparently you don't get those back. Between you and me and the fence post, I decided I wasn't all that good at fencing. I decided to go back to fishing and look for something I could cook to help with that. The dish of the sea was out of our wheelhouse for now, as it itself required a recipe I didn't have. But I hoped to make some soon. At the ocean, I discovered a nautilus shell, which I knew was in a bundle. Specifically, the field research bundle. So I grabbed it and held on greedily. I also found a dried starfish buried in the sand, which was apparently an artifact? I sold the other forage that wasn't an artifact or a coveted bundle item to Willy, and purchased this lovely thing. The trap bobber, a bobber designed to make the fish get away just a bit more slowly than usual when you didn't have it in your green bar. That sounded just like the edge I needed. And Willy also had this trout soup, offering a temporary plus one to fishing after eating it. So I bought six. I assume they didn't stack, but I wanted to have plenty, as I had no idea how long they would last. On my way to glory, I stopped by the big quest board, taking a quest from
from Gus to gather and give him two dozen eggs. 24 eggs sounded very doable considering I was averaging six a day. Giving Leia a flower for luck, I headed back to the scene of the crime with my new bobber and super soup and tossed my line in the water. I got a hold of her several times and she got away several times. But after a few solid attempts, this happened. Come on, 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 yes! Oh my God, we got it! Oh, you've caught one of the legendary fish. We did it! such a fight, dude. Feeling on top of the world, I brought the new catch home and start away the fish because it was apparently the only one. Like, the only one. Because it was the legendary fish of winter. I never confirmed this, but the Lost Book heavily implied there was just the one. With my new one-of-a-kind trophy stored away for later, I headed to bed, scoring level 9 foraging in my gamer dreams. I think I had the winter seeds to thank for that one. Day 97 wouldn't seem like a day to find out about a mysterious quest line that had been hiding under our noses, yet day 97 was in fact that day. I started to storing eggs for Gus's quest, accidentally eating one like the pro farmer I am. I floundered once again with the oil maker with every type of mushroom I could find. Nothing. The apricot tree had grown some, and I donated two new things to the museum. But I had some new books, one of which mentioned something called void mayonnaise, which was apparently a delicacy of the goblins in this world. Okay, sure, that makes sense. But there was another book, which started a very peculiar goose chase. Gunther himself mentions in it that he found a small little door in the tunnel leading out of town. I couldn't help but take the bait, just like that glacier fish had many times, and went to the tunnel. I found this little door, and was informed it was a lockbox that had no battery. Curious. Very curious. I I went home and tried using Void Essence on my mayonnaise machine, which did nothing. The book said Void Mayonnaise, okay, I had to check. I brought that Void Essence to the wizard, per his request, and headed home to grab a battery to try on that gnarly hidden lockbox. It opened with a satisfying... And within, there was a note. It also added an analogous quest to our quest log. We needed a rainbow shell, and we needed to leave it at the train station. Weird. Clandestine. I like it. Looking at our quests, I was reminded of this one about finding the shadowy figure. With it on my mind, I returned to where I'd last seen him and noticed these footprints on the ground. Following them led me to this bush, which upon shaking caused this little thing to pop out. He gave us a magnifying glass and ran off in a hurry. Just when I thought the lost books were crazy, this thing had given us the power to find secret notes. I didn't quite know what that would mean, so I went to the nearby community center to drop off the Nautilus shell to the field research bundle, receiving a recycling machine for our efforts, and heading home for sleep, and earning level 9 farming. This had some very interesting interesting recipes to go with it, including the seed maker, iridium sprinkler, and quality fertilizer. In fact, that next morning, I confirmed how useful they would be, but I couldn't make any of them. We got a letter about the night market arriving tomorrow, and I saved more eggs for Gus, including some of the iridium quality ones I'd saved before. I expanded the fence, and needing more hardwood, I went to the secret woods. It was there I found my first secret note. I learned I would actually pick these up rather than them teleporting to a library, and after using them as an item, I would glean their secrets. This one in particular was a note written by Penny about what some of her peers like as gifts. The info actually even populated into the liked gifts section of their social info, which was both surprising and useful. I found a similar note by Abigail about what she liked, then headed home to finish the fence. I put down a new recycling machine, grabbed the eggs for Gus, and brought them to him. Finding out the hard way, I should have counted the eggs twice. I had brought 23 eggs, and that simply wouldn't do. I found another interesting secret note talking about Junimos liking gems in their hunts, clueless about what this would mean. I tried to give them one in the community center's hut, to no avail. I decided, like Void Mayonnaise, I was missing some important element. After more much needed sleep, day 99 brought with it our first goat milk. It wasn't large though, so I proceeded to make cheese out of it. I found this note, advising me to look in trash cans for things, which, in fairness, did net me a free fish. I gave Gus the rest of his eggs, then headed home to get that cheese. I sold the regular cheese and a good few gems for cash, because I really wanted that lava katana. I brought the goat cheese to the artisan bundle and headed home. I collected and sold some new wine, with its correlating fruit to compare, of course. I hit the secret woods, and then headed to the night market for the first time. I talked with everybody I could, seeing strange things like this submarine and this extremely odd mermaid show. I also fished some, netting an aquamarine of all things. I give it to Emily, who was at the market, somehow bringing her all the way to 10 hearts. Who would have thought I'd get a girlfriend all the way to 10 hearts in 100 days? Not to mention this sweet achievement for doing it too. Feeling proud and well liked, I headed home for the last normal sleep of these 100 days. Day 100 was upon me and I genuinely had no idea. I still managed to have a surprisingly cinematic end to this leg of the journey. Firstly, Gus gave us a fridge for bringing him eggs. Nice. Lewis sent us a letter about how we would hypothetically get married. Hypothetically. And conveniently under that letter was one from Emily about going camping in the secret woods at night. Sus, Mr. Mayor, sir. 
Very sus. I placed our new fridge down, learning it could be cooked from directly. I needed to get more of these. But you know what else I needed? A spicy sword. I sold some goods directly to Pierre to clear the monetary requirement, and headed to Marlin to put down the cash for a shiny new spicy boy to cut things with. And finally, in hand, I had the strongest sword in the game. Right? Surely. While testing out my blade, for scientific purposes I assure you, I found this note about Leia's perfect date. How did that get down here? Not to mention these other two about a bush and about gifts for Emily and Haley. I decided it was time to go on a camping date. Warping to the beach and completely ignoring the night market, I ran to the secret woods, only to run into Shane, who decided to be really depressing first. Then I went camping. But of course, Emily conveniently left her sleeping bag outside the tent, and a bear showed up scaring us into the tent. So she and I decided to share one. That bear was a paid actor, I swear. So there's 100 days of Stardew Valley. How do we do? I'm not really sure. How do you think I did? Let me know in the comments, but here's the stats. We made a quarter of a million G, which may not be speedrun levels, but I imagine it's nothing to sneeze at. We managed to secure many high social standings, even securing a 10 heart girlfriend, which I'm proud to say I did without any guides. We got an awesome weapon, the Lava Katana, which, while might not be the best weapon, was the best one I knew about. We made it to the bottom of the mines, securing the Skull Key and finding Skull Cavern and even finished over half the community center, securing three stars. How did your first crack at this game go? Are you a pro who can't see anything but a noob, or do you think I did well for a wikiless lad? Let me know what you think in the comments, and while you're down there, subscribe if you enjoyed this. I'm 100% going to do a 200 days video as well. This journey was and is a ton of fun, and it's not over yet. Also, if you can't wait, check out this Let's Play of the Journey to see the whole thing unfold in more scrumptious detail.